it good be? Hopefully what it should be. This is your boy N-O-R-E. What up? It's DJ EFN. And this is Drink Champs Yappy Hour. Make some noise! <laughs> well, when it comes to Mr. Texas, Mr. Houston, mm. Mr. Sideways, the people's champ. The brother has been out here stomping, doing what he got to do, not only of the culture, but he even married into the culture, God damn it. <laughs> He's done what he got to do, been, went, been, been, been out here from uh, Switch the House for him, his, his, his tapes with Chameleon there, and to, to now they just still out here, still doing what the hell he got to do. If, if you had to get iced out in your mouth, you had to go see him. Yes, sir. You mother flippers. In case you don't know the flip I'm talking about, we talking about motherfucking. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. Now, Paul, well, I want to I want to start from the beginning because um, other than Bum B, this is our second Houston rapper, correct? Man, that's what's I up. believe. Yeah, yeah. We, we, got, we were almost had. Well, huh? I was we had Scarface. Yeah, yeah, we had Scarface, but I got got him sick at the fucking my food show. I had because yeah, 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 I was yeah. filming my food show, and then he was supposed to do drink champs that yeah. night, and I, I brought him to a fucking restaurant. He did him dirty. He did him dirty. You know, it was funny as hell because he kept going like that, making a noise like that. So you know how Scarface is funny. So I'm thinking Scarface is making fun of me and shit the whole time. This motherfucker's really getting sick and shit. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I want so. Um, I want to take it from the beginning because obviously all of y'all are are from this like the, the Swisher House movement, right? So in the beginning, because um, I heard you used to write uh, 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 Pimp C letters and things like that. But in the beginning, how did you yeah. get started? How how did you find your love for the music? Uh, me and Chameleon, we grew up together on the same street. I knew him my whole life. Uh, we both was introduced to hip hop around the same age, around the same time, through the, through the same era. Mm. Of uh, especially of Texas artists that inspired us, mm. you know, because at that time there wasn't. If we look on the TV or turn on the radio, there wasn't a lot of people from where we're from that were professional in music. Besides, like, like a that. rap a lot. Yeah, ra- rap right, a lot. Right. Even then, it was like I, I, when you're living in Houston and you see, like, you turn on the other, uh, you turn on TV, whatever. You see, kind of like how people treat rap a lot. Sometimes we always kind of felt like. We got the short end of the yeah, stick. Yeah. We being kind of Houston, mm-hmm. like maybe being it was so centrally located at the south, at the bottom of the Midwest. You know, we're in the south, but we're far west on the south, so right. we're kind of removed from kind of what goes on sometimes in Florida or, yeah, we or felt Georgia. Like that in Miami. Yeah, yeah. So right. it's like you know, and although we have a lot of similarities, it was like man, you know, we because y'all, like, it's like, y'all different part of the south. Like Pimp yeah. said, he said that he considered he considered. That the South, like Texas, because of yeah. the different time zone. Right, right. Do, do you do you agree with that statement, or that was just? Wrong? I mean, me personally, <laughs> I never looked at the time zone as being a reason for where being right. in the South, because there's plenty of people in the Central Time Zone. Is you know, right. Chicago's the Central Time Zone, and that right. ain't the South. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, it just it, it's just a, more the Southwest. But even then, you know, California is the Southwest. Right. So because Texas like, seems so big, it feels West Coast sometimes. Yeah, you know, right. you yeah. look at it. Right. And, and, and the one thing that gets lost too is that inside of Texas. Mm-hmm. We all got our own culture. So Houston and Dallas is a lot different. Wow. And if you add in San Antonio and Austin, all four of them places are four distinct different cultures within Texas. Some of the stuff we do share, you know, some of the same similarities. Oh, Austin is like, a real town? Or the, so only for South by Southwest? No, I didn't know. Come on, I didn't know. It's the capital, man. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm bad. But imagine growing up in Austin. Right. Where once a year it's the biggest music festival right. ever, right. and then the rest of the year it's like, well, what's going on? There is events go- that, that right. go on there, yeah. like throughout the year, like there's something called Texas Relays, which is like mm. a, a big slab event, a big car event, where we're mm. all co- we we'll, we'll all go there to to Austin for the Texas Relays for that. And there's other events too, you know, throughout the year. And Austin got a dope scene, period, musically, not just you know mm. all over music, but for sure specifically in hip hop. But you know, just it's a different culture. It's a different. Being that it's a capital, being that it's a, a college town, being that they have the, you know, it's considered a live, they call it the live music capital of the world. Yeah. So the rappers coming out of there, you could tell they're influenced by that. Then you go to mm. San Antonio. San Antonio is a huge military uh, uh, town, basically. So th- it has its own culture separate from the military. But the fact that there's all these military bases all on, in San Antonio, around San Antonio, all the way to, to Fort Hood, which is clean. Uh, but you have people that come from around the world and grow up in San Antonio, but they kind of like from New York, but they're living in San Antonio because their parents stationed in San Antonio. I always thought San Antonio was California. It, man, it, yeah. it, it's a huge... It, also, San Antonio is... 
you know, the, the first like major, major city when you come up the up from the border, from the Mexican border right there. Mm. So there's, you know, Brownsville, McAllen, all that, Corpus Christi, and then San Antonio, which is mm. the big city. It's where, the, you know, they got we got a basketball team, there's Spurs, right. we got the, right. you know, the, the the Oilers used to do their pregame, preseason out there, the Texans, I don't know if they, I don't think they do, no, but the Oilers used to, they got, you know, in Corpus Christi right there, which is right there where Selena's from, rest in peace, Selena, but they got the, uh, you know, uh, uh, in Round Rock, all around there, they got the uh the different minor league teams for the Astros. So mm-hmm. it's like it's 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 different than like major big city right. type of operation stuff that go on, but it's still big city things that go on. Right. So a lot of money out there. Yeah. Like so if you're a producer or right. you're a, a, a artist coming up in San Antonio, you got more of a, a I would say a global influence growing up there because it's people that I mean it's like that everywhere though. Even Miami, right. it's people from all over the world yeah. right here. Right. But you know it's just when you in, when you in school and Everybody in your class, their parents are from somewhere outside of Texas. It's like it just gives you a different perspective when you are growing up as a, a rapper or producer. So they got a dope hip hop scene. Is you know it's different. So each one, of these, then we got other other cities like El Paso, which is right there on you know. Yeah, rest in peace to what happened. Yeah, for sure. Man. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, man. For sure. Thoughts out to all in prayer, man. Rest in peace. But, but in two thousand and five, you were signed to Atlantic Records, right? Yep. And uh, the debut on that was the People's Champ. Right? Yes, sir. Then followed by Get Money and, and Stay True. Yes, right? sir. How c- can you compare being on a, a major? Uh, to to because you went back to independent now, right? Yeah, for sure. How, 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 what do you like more, and how do you compare? Oh, uh, I mean, the differences I would say is when you're independent, you got to fund everything, uh, and it's a, a lot more. The independent is grind work, it's relationships that either you or people in your inner circle have built on through years. You know what I'm saying? So it, that's what the independent grind is all about. It's right. you know doing the footwork, doing the leg work, just going out there really. Touching, interacting with your fans, really giving the people what they want consistently. Then when you go to a major label, you know, some people can continue that grind inside the major system, but it's a different, it's like college sports versus major league sports. You know what I'm saying? It's it's similar, but it's different. What do you prefer? I mean, the major the, when you're on a major label, you got all their resources, money. Yes. You ain't got to call nobody. They call yeah. for you. So yeah. it's, you know, it, it's, I would say, I, being also that I sell grills, but. And, and when I was on a major label, I, I still had independent, multiple independent <clears throat> albums I was getting, collecting money off of. That was selling more now that I'm on a major. Right. And I'm selling grills and I got t-shirt lines. So I got other multiple businesses that are all benefiting from the major exposure. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. So I for sure would say I would like the major better. But yeah, if, I'm with you on that. If I'm just an artist. I hate independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you got to be built for no, that. She yeah. was about to say something yeah. positive about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, definitely, you know, it's a... It's, uh, if you if you have a great business mind and you you can take the blood, sweat, and tears and you can hustle and not give up and tap out, then that independent is for sure the way to go. But you, you still need the staff. Yeah, yeah, you still need yeah, the staff. That's what that's what get lost too is that when you're independent, it's like some of it works. Where my manager, who's my manager, is he been my manager, the only manager I ever had, right. and he's my homeboy I grew up with, right. and he didn't go to school for management. He was doing something else when I was right. like, hey man, I need you to come on the road because. I need help, you know, right. and the reason why I went with that route instead of going with somebody who has a, you know, a diploma, a degree, a resume, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to go with somebody that I personally can trust, where right. they have, where I feel like they have my best interests at heart, they come from where I come from, so they share some of the same perspective, right. they want the same things for me, where when some of the managers, they just there for their money, they don't care if you and your wife stay married, they don't right. care if your whole hood turn on you and don't care about you and call you a sellout, they don't care about that. They were like, well, yeah, let them call you a sellout, we getting you these checks. Uh, but them yeah. things mean something to me, you know, right, like, right. I, it means something to me to be able to go back to where I grew up right. and for people to be proud of me to be from there, right. as opposed to go back to where I grew up and them to be like, oh, he a sellout, man, we don't fuck with him. You know, right. I ain't, that, that mean more to me than... Whatever the check might be, because you can't buy that type of love or respect. And also just, you know, the music for me, this is like, a, this is a love, a passion for me. So it's my dream job. The only other job I would want, it would be to be a DJ. That's why I started out as DJing, because to me, that was something I seen a career path in being a DJ, where I didn't see a career path being a rapper, because it just... Ain't that many rappers right. from my neighborhood. Then eventually, when you start seeing people, like, so what made you start rapping? Then me and Kamee in there doing it for fun. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, we we going to school together. We in whatever grade, you know, right. second, third, fourth grade, or whatever. Whenever you know, we we beating on a on a lunch table. We on a school bus, whatever. And 
a lot of times it came from seeing other people doing it and me thinking, man, they was trash, man. I could put some words together better than that. <laughs> and then someone maybe called me out, hey, Pow Wow, what you got? You, you, let me see what you got. And I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let me tell you what I got. And, you know, then the reaction of people, oh, damn, you really good. It's like, oh, shit, maybe I am kind of good. Let me try to do this. But it was never, you know, even up until, because me and Kamina were rapping for a long time before we saw any success. And then when we got, when we came into the Switch House, even before that, I was doing, I was DJing for the Switch House. I was carrying Michael Watts crates. I was passing out flyers. Me and my boy T. Ferris was in the uh, in the office pressing up the CDs before they the same CDs that you buy out the store. We were pressing them up, so I was doing more background work as opposed to just being in front of the microphone and I'm on a uh, you know on a mixtape. So I really worked my way into the Swisher House. So even becoming an artist in the Swisher House, that was like back then in our neighborhood was like. That was it. That, that was like it, bro. Yeah. Every yeah. car wash, like everywhere. And you like did street jamming. team shit too, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So I could identify Some of that, that to me was the street team was working for Dead Jam or working for No Limit and, and then yeah, Cash yeah. Money. And then that's how I got on with Switch House. And then at that time too, with Switch House, everybody wanted to rap with Switch House, like in Houston right. on the north side. So it was right. like, shit, how can I be? And I seen how Michael Watts, when people would start blowing his phone up to get on a tape, you know, eventually he like, don't answer. I ain't answering that shit. But he fucked with me, so I'm like, damn, I don't want him to, if I ask him, I don't want him to turn that off, and then I can't get on no tape no more. I can't get, you know, he's going to be like, oh, I don't come around. So I said, okay, man, I just, you know, work my way in, doing other work, doing other work. And I actually got on with Switch House with Michael Watts, because I one time I seen him, I'm doing, I'm putting up, I'm putting up posters for a Def Jam artist, somebody. I seen him at one of the record stores, and I asked him, I said, hey, Watts, man, how come y'all don't never rap on no Cash Money, Manny Fresh beats? Because I used to love Cash Money. And Manny Fresh beats used to go hard. And they would never, whatever freestyle and he was like, well, the artists choose the beats and they just didn't choose the beats. I'm like, man, they tell them they tripping. They need to rap on this beat, <laughs> that beat. And he just called me out. I was like, well, what would you do? And I just freestyle something and he was like, come on, let's go. And then we took me to the studio and from now, there. Now, Michael Watts, um, he died off a of lean or? No, you talking about DJ Screw. Yeah, oh, there's yeah, DJ Screw. Yeah, Screw. Yeah, Screw. Yeah, yeah. Screw. Okay. But um, even then, um, I mean, it's like a debatable subject. I mean, he did have codeine in his blood, but I don't think that's what killed him. He had a lot of, he had other stuff in it. You know, the lifestyle be what kill you, I think, more than lean. Now, I, I mean, you know, it's a very touchy subject, and then also try to. I like some of it. I try. I try to be respectful of not only him or whoever else, but at the same time, it's a lot of miseducation that people talk about there. Like you know, about fake lean? facts about lean. Like, okay. Put I mean, on. me personally, I I've never seen ever anyone in the history of drink ever die from coding. Now, is it possible you could die from that? Man, I might be drank out and then get in a car accident, but is the lean will kill me? You know, or if if I sip a drink and I'm eating fried foods every day, I'm not drinking no water. Only water I'm drinking is the ice in my cup. Right. Uh, I'm not exercising at all. I'm staying up. I'm not getting proper sleep. Everything else I'm eating and putting in my body, not only fried foods, but it's some type of trash. Because lean itself is sugary, right? And then, yeah. and then you mix it with some we, other sugar. Yeah, you mix so is, it. is that like a big part of it? Uh, you know, I have seen long term people who sip drink long term, they teeth might get fucked up. But oh, wow. you know, a lot of it is just it ain't like meth, where if you smoke meth, your right. teeth gonna get fucked up. Right. Well right. drink, it's if you sip drink right. and you don't brush your teeth ever, and right. you sip drink every day, every day, every day, right. then you might get cavities. But right. that's right. that same could be said for the soda. Right. And most people that I've heard talk about it, they say it's the soda. That right. fucks your teeth up not to drink. There's right. sugar in the drink, but the sugar in the soda is what's really what it is. Now, the thing that I think um, most people, I think the most valuable information about any type of recreational drug consumption is that, it, you know, it's kind of taboo. Hold, hold on, I like the way he said it. Recreational drug consumption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue, continue. That was hard. That was hard. You know, some of it be taboo to talk about, but at right. the same time, the fact that we keeping it private is what's causing people to die. Like some of this, like, you know, if you're taking Norco's or, or Oxycontin or anything like that yeah. or any Opiates. opioids, yeah, yeah, and you're drinking alcohol, right. that shit could be deadly. If you're right. taking the opioids and the Xanax and other things, the combination, that shit for sure is deadly. So it's like, you know, it ain't because you know, you drink know, will you know, kill you. But the lean is an opioid. The, the yeah. 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 You, you so, know what's L-E um, is that when they said that they found Pimp C that that he couldn't he couldn't breathe, like so like uh, like like um like I think he rolled over or something like that. I forget. 
and like he couldn't breathe. So they, they didn't say it's lean. They said that like yeah. the fact that he sleep apnea they, or something. Yeah, he he had for sure. He had rest in peace, man. To yeah, rest grace, in peace. That was, that was my dog. He um. He de- he had sleep apnea. The doctor told him, you know, his wife Shanar, she'll say this when she come on here. You can ask her, she'll tell you, man. The doctor say you got sleep apnea. You have to have the mask. If you sleep without the mask, yeah, the you're gonna die. That's just dangerous. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah, he told him if you oh, sleep dangerous. without it, you're gonna die. He slept without it, he died. Did he have oh. drinking? He did have drinking in his system. I think they say he had cocaine in the system too. Right. You know, but you ain't never hear no one say, "Oh, he died from cocaine overdose." Right. But he had cocaine in the system. Right. They say, "Oh, he died from drink overdose." The doctor didn't say he died from drink overdose. The doctor said he died from heart or respiratory failure or something, which came from the sleep apnea. Right. But lean drink. is a dangerous because I see so many people like so addicted to it. Like I know people who don't. You they know, wake up and that's what they do. They- some of it is. I mean, I, me, I think the lifestyle is the most dangerous. Where lean. the lean is so expensive, so people will get caught up in sipping lean and then. They fucking their money off. Now, it ain't like to the point where people is breaking in their mama houses, pawning TVs to go buy right. a drink, but they will. You know, I see people fuck off a lot of money on the drink. And it, the, and to me, what's dangerous about it, the absolute most, is the fake drink. When they be playing yeah, with the drink. Yeah, we had 2 talking about it. He was breaking down all the right. fake stuff. Right. Yeah, that shit is the, the most, most, most dangerous because... Man, you don't know what you're sipping. You yeah, know so what, what are they doing when they make it a fake shit? Man, I don't, I, they need to stop doing whatever they're doing, man. They need to stop. But I don't, miss, I don't know. I don't know if they whipping it up in their garage, like, you know, or if it's something they just... Because they don't brew this shit? Man, I don't know what they doing, but it ain't drink. You know, it's maybe whatever they... I don't, I don't know. It, that shit... To me, is what's the dangerous shit though is when they sip the, the fake drink because you don't know what you sipping. It's just like when they when you got pressed up pills, you know the, the when pressed up pills is dangerous, man. You know one little grain of fentanyl more than right. you're supposed to have will kill you. You know what I'm saying? Is the activist still floating around or no? That's, man, that's they, that. You can Google this. They stopped making activists in 2000, uh, like 11. So, if so someone has activists right now. It's fake. Oh, they that's that's real. But man, they, if my mama had activists right now, I tell her quit playing. It ain't no real. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible? I mean, this the this the scam. All right. I got my I got all this fake drink. I come to you and I say, hey, I got, my, I got a homeboy in Kentucky. His grandma on the pharmacy. They ain't sell this shit. They ain't never get rid of it. And we got a, a stockpile of it. It's the real shit, man. I, I can get it to you. Whatever. I don't know. I'm th- I'm going off what you're saying. You right. know, you completely scamming me, or somebody scammed you, right. so you really believe it. Mm-hmm. And then it's that's the thing is that I, man, I I can tell you, you know, this that's what they say. It's, it came from the Midwest somewhere or somewhere like that. Where if, if some came from a pharmacy in Iowa, how can I verify that? All right. I'm in Houston. Or, right. You know, I, I, if it's come from anywhere, I can who's the first it. nigga to yeah, I'm about to say it. Like, where did that come say, from? Hey, oh, hi, I, nigga. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know who the first to ever come up with this. Yeah, yeah. Tom, but, thank who, you. Thank who, God bless you. We need to make who, that, who that, that nigga, Who is that nigga? Who the nigga that thought of a thong? Yeah. That nigga yeah. just said, yeah. yo, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I'll take yeah. the rest of this shit out of here. And we're going to put specific shit up your ass. Because it works. It works, thong guy. The other thing they'll do is they'll say, Oh, I know somebody who used to work at activists, mm. so they know how to make it. They got, they can get the chemicals online, and they can make it. They know how to make it. It's the same thing, man. It ain't the same thing, and they ain't work, used to work at activists. They sell a fake drink, and they just need a story to sell it. Then the other thing they'll say is, oh, well, uh, okay, the uh, uh, the the uh, okay, we got the pharmacies in the Midwest. Uh-huh. We got the somebody used to work at activists. Then they'll, it, it'll be just things like that, or, or I know somebody who can create it, or I used to have it, or my homeboy just got out of jail. This smoke kicking in. So I, I just got out of jail, or my home, my homeboy just got out of jail. He had these pints at his mama house, and he he want to sell them, you know. But it'll be, what do you got a hundred pints? Because you've been selling them same pints for months now. <laughs> Shit, like damn. But uh, you know, they the, the scams on the fake drink on how it's real is just, man, it's it's ridiculous though. But uh, you know. Well, big up to Shine Papers. Uh, big up to Smoke Champs. Smoke Champs, baby. Uh, big up to 220 uh, Miami and Nine Lives Collective. And, uh, you know, big up to people with Cherry and, like I said, Shine Papers and all that. But, all right, so, Switzer House now, pop. But, but go before that. Okay. Because I want to yes, go so. back to when, when Screw 
and then right. started making the tapes. That was all based off of lean culture as well, right? I mean, it was a part of it for sure. You know what I'm saying? But it was like, it's like when you make a club song, it's not, it, you know, the alcohol has something to do with it. The alcohol go with it. But right. you can make a club party song and you don't even drink. It's, so you know, the slow down music wasn't because of the... For sure, that was part of me. You know, um, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I think, I didn't think if you were sober as fuck, I'd be yeah. like, "What is going on?" Well, I'm, I mean, I grew up, and I didn't smoke or drink growing up until right. I was older. So I grew up appreciating it. To me, it was the greatest music on earth. So you know, you can still appreciate it. You know, I think without that, but I think in the moment of creating it and all that, and I created it too before I, you know, I was slowing music down, DJing like that before right. I was really like leaning. In, in what do y'all smoking. actually do to slow it down? A, pitch it down, it's, right? It's, it's, it's the different pitch. now. Now it's like a. It's, but in the it's a, now it's a plug. But with you know records, they just, oh, okay. they just the pitch yeah. was. Yeah, all you the way slow down. it down. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. live, hot man. It would be all. And that was just a Houston thing, or like because it, it, you know back in those days, it's funny because I, I it, there was a DJ in Florida who would make mixtapes too slow down, but he wouldn't. They wouldn't chop them up in, and not mix in Miami, them, though, right? Right? Oh, in, in Miami, Miami, I think Florida Lauderdale, maybe. Oh, okay. But it was uh, it was like a pretty big because everything like, here we speed it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you but, jump on the express and, yeah, and get us yeah. out DJs. I remember I came down here in like '98, '99. Uh, for something that was going on and with my Jamaican partner, and it was like all you know, it was going down. It was all up tempo. You know, and then we passed by one person. I hear somebody jamming screw it. I'm like, oh shit, they must be from Texas. And then right. that's how I found out. Like, nah, we nah, they fucks with it. We, yeah. we fucked with it yeah, out here. But yeah. but since we sped it up out here, we was like, how the yeah. fuck do you listen to this? Yeah, because everybody's right. doing cocaine out yeah, here. Yeah, so then, so that's if you yeah, think yeah. about it. I mean, I just yeah, made that up, but I mean, right. if you think yeah. about it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Right. We're sped up out here. Right. You know, Caribbean vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's slowed down. Sounds a little better. Some of it in Texas, you know, I thought about some of it in Texas. We spread out. You know, so we got, you know, you got to have a car to get from point A to point B or whatever. You got to have a right. car. Whereas, you know, it's like that in a lot of cities as well. Yeah. But, you know, it's also not like that in a lot of cities. So we spread it. You got to have a car. A lot of people take better care of their car than their house. So we're going to have make sure we have, mute. you know, there's bass in the trunk. So then that leads to there being bass in the music. Because when you're an artist, too, you're like, oh, I don't they ain't playing my shit if it ain't got no bass in it. So let me make sure it got a lot of bass in it. Then it's hot as fuck. So, you know, shit's huh. slow like that. Then the swing and all of that, the driving slow, it really traditionally, like in the car, car wise, came from the streets being fucked up. There being potholes or whatever, man. If I'm in this car, I ain't finna fuck my rims up. I'm gonna drive slow. slow. I'm gonna swing around them. And then it became like a, a tradition or The just, spokes on y'all rims when they it stick out. The wire wheels. Yeah, that, 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 that's for niggas not to come close to your car? Uh, or, it, I mean, or that's like the style. This is the style. Okay. For the over the years, they've gotten wider. You okay. know, they originally when they originally came out in '84, they was they didn't stick out past the fender. Right. But just you know, when they as time went on, they got the technology got better. The rims got improved from going from aluminum to steel. So. You know, they don't get dent up as much. They don't fall apart like they used to. It's a, you know, it's like a, it just didn't got upgraded, updated with the times. Mm. Um, but because we'll drive right next to each other and it'd be looking like we about to crash. Right. You know, uh-huh. it take it definitely take a, a, a seasoned veteran driver. You got to kind of hold your nuts when you're driving. Huh. You know, some of that is with it. Then at the same time, you got to kind of be, you got to be focused. You can't be on your phone, all that kind of shit. You got to, you got to focus because you for sure that crash. That was candy paint. For sure. That's the, you know, that, that candy. That drip, that wet. Yes, sir. <laughs> House, shout out to House of Colors. Shout out to House of Colors. You know, we uh that's that's something, man, you know, car lovers around the world. It's funny because uh a lot of people, a lot of the car cultures outside of Houston don't fuck with the poking rims. Right. They like like, man, they don't fuck with the po they be like, oh, yeah, your car clean, but the rims look like trash. Mm-hmm. So they really don't man, especially right. like, it's funny, like all my brothers in California, they be going at it with all my homies from Texas, where it'd be like Shit, because they, the cars be a little bit different, but car car lovers everywhere, you know, they got love for that candy paint, man. When you got that that paint that's so wet, it look like a Jolly Rancher. The paint that look <laughs> like it look like you just sprayed it with a with a water hose. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? That, man, it's just it's just something about that, especially when it's clean. You got candy paint that's dirty, man. I'm the definition of riding dirty, mm. man. <laughs> my, my shit be so dirty, but man, when, when that shit be cleaned up and you looking good, man, ain't nothing like a, a wet candy car, man. It ain't nothing like a slab on candy, man, for sure. Now, how'd you get into grills? Because most rappers, no one. Is thinking like that. Like, how did you? How did your mom even like to, to man, part of that. the culture to start yeah. with? Every business right. I got into, it 
was uh, I want that. How can I get it cheaper? I can get it cheaper if I sell it than if I'm just a customer. So how can I sell it? And mm. let me, you know, let me learn the game. Whatever, anything, I, any business I have or have ever had. So with that, it was I always wanted one. I wanted a grill, right. but. You know, in the South, it was always permanent grills. You know, you would go to a dentist to do the grills. And then, you know, you couldn't get no removable grills, nothing like that. That's what we would always see in shit everywhere, period. Right. And then all of a sudden, we see Wu-Tang on the videos taking their grills out. We like, man, what's going on? How they, how they do that? I want right. one of them grills. We ain't had nothing like that. Yeah, uh, permanent. Yeah, permanent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, uh, you know... My boy Crime came from Brooklyn. He came with the removable style grills to Houston. He's still selling grills too. He 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 like a traveling grill salesman. He go all around the country, all around the world selling grills. But he came to Houston to our neighborhood selling New York style grills. You know, removable grills, and they was cheaper than the other grills. We like, man, what, what's going on? These some flea market grills. These some like beauty shop grill, wig shop grills, or what's uh-huh. going? Because you know you can get the one little tooth. That, come on, come uh-huh. on. Like we ain't talking like we talking about like the custom removable all of that. We like, man, hold on. Everything he had was just some next level different shit. And I would always see him because at that time too, I'm passing out flyers, promoting at clubs, and then I bam see his flyer on the car. So I bump into him. He see me. He like. Man, oh, you the one who been passing out these flyers. And I'm like, man, you the one who's selling grills. And he like, I, I just straight up told him he wanted me to work for him doing promotions. I'm like, bet, I want to work for you. But shit, I need that wholesale price. You know, I, I ain't going to start my own store without you, nothing like that. I need it for my own personal use. So he hired me to promote, had me promoting for him. He actually had me running a store selling grills. And then that's how I got my first set of grills. Was- and you know how to make grills yourself? Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. Like you, you, you know. Yeah, yeah. Get start the fuck. to finish from yeah, learn, every, from. yeah, from taking your mold to casting the gold. Get the fuck out there. I ain't now, nah, now nah, I, I ain't, I ain't, I can't front. Uh, it, it, I, if you, if I say you, if I get you a grill, like uh, your grills, uh, uh, Johnny made them. Okay, okay, all right, cool, cool. Yeah, 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 I, I, I just, did a new one. Yeah, I, I, give I me did. on the verse, so <laughs> don't give me on the. Hey, yeah, I, 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 I'll take. I'll be, <laughs> I'll like take your mold. Let me take your mold. Right. Right. I'll let Johnny right. said that. I'll let my boy Jesus said the diamonds right. or something, man. You know, right. but, right. so, but yeah, yeah. But man, from there it was a uh, my boy Crime. He had me up under him, and then eventually he just he brought me to Johnny, where we was just salesmen. Johnny made the everything from scratch. And oh wow! At that point, Johnny was you know on his rise to stardom. You know, being a grill maker, right. and then he like, man, you know what? It's about time for me to get a store. That's Right around the time when we linked up, and then we just kind of took it to another level. And then him being a, a Vietnamese immigrant, uh, it'd be tough sometimes, man. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you a story. This is this is like one time I hung out with TV John. He's one of the motherfucking most. You know, he got the illest accent. The in the accent, world. bro. Yeah, bro. So that he said to me, tough, bro. "So I had just we was in LA. I was with Spiff TV, and I think we were shooting a video for these people, uh, Mastercraft. So T- TV Johnny comes, Johnny Dane comes." To uh, I think we was filming in the Roxy in LA on, on Sunset. So I'm like, yo, I'm mad happy. I went to Watts, I went to Compton, I went to Inglewood, I went to all these hoods in um in LA. So the whole time I'm saying, man, I just went to all the hoods in LA. TV Johnny looked at me and said, man, that's no hood. I'm yeah. from Vietnam. They eat my dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, yeah. Saying, my hood, no, yeah. no electricity, so, no water. I'm, I'm trying to identify what the fuck yeah. is being hood and eating his dog. For. Yeah. So I'm like, because I, I was like, you can't just tell me some shit like yeah, that yeah. and just move on. Yeah. I need to know why you just said that. He said, "Man, I had my pet one day." I said, "Your pet?" He said, "Yeah, man, my dog. I went to the store. I leave him outside." They take him. And I said, what? And then later on, they said, they gave me a plate of food. I eat my dog with them. Damn. <laughs> Damn. I said, TV yeah. Johnny. That's the proudest story I ever heard. Yeah, we but I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. We went to Africa. We went to, we in Sierra Leone. We, had, we was in the village. And he was like, oh, this remind me of this. We say, this remind me of my hood. This where I'm from. He's like, hey, hey, this is shit. He felt comfortable and shit. Yeah, right. he's like, man, it's just like Vietnam. Oh, that's like right. Vietnam. You went, well, Tango got their own. Yep. And y'all went yeah, to the, the, the actual yep. Wei Kwan. Yeah, yeah how was that experience? Man, it was so dope, bro. Just like, <laughs> you know, first of all, going over there, going to Africa is something that's like, man, that's the motherland. He's going to Africa to up tomorrow. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, bro, he's going to Africa. Gosh. And take and enjoy, brother. Hey, enjoy. You gonna man. Yeah. You gonna love it, man. Every everything period there was like, just just being there was just a whole experience. Breathing in the air, I'm taking it all, and you know I'm man. Sierra Leone, this is where the people that got 
one hands from like the, the diamond. Yeah. Yeah. Blood yeah. diamond. Blood diamond. Yeah. Blood that was that was like MTV joint y'all yep. did? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what like MTV, right? Yeah. Yeah. Blood yeah. diamond. I don't know why I keep saying yeah. that. Blood yeah. diamond. Yeah. I don't know why. Keep coming out with me. It was crazy, man, when uh the uh, Raquel when she came to us to to do it. My boy T. Ferris was like, man, I don't know if we want Paul Wall to go to Africa. He's going to come back with a dashiki. He ain't going to have no grill. He's going to take his grill out. He ain't going to be on the same. He's going to be a different Paul. Because everybody always, you know, think about Dave Chappelle when he went to Africa and then he turned down 50 million. So right. that's what he said. He like, man, I don't, if that 50 million come, we need to sign the check. Right. You know, but I, I was just like, nah, I, I, whatever it is, you know, it can never do transform me personally. And also being at a time when I just had, I just had my son. So it's like. You you put it just puts the whole world in, in perspective, perspective yeah. you know. Just uh, especially growing up in Houston, leaving Houston to go to other cities and then going to other continents and other other completely different worlds. You know, it's 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 an amazing thing that I this is my dream job, man. I, I appreciate every second of all of that. That's real. Then to really be educated on the diamonds and all that. Things I ain't know about. Yeah, like, so so put us on. What did you learn out there? Like, okay, first of all, the shit's corrupt as fuck, just right. like it is everywhere worldwide. Yeah. You know, shit, and man, the people being exploited. All the stories you hear about Africa being exploited for their resources. That shit be real talk. Right. Like people don't be understanding that this this is a, a world where every human came from, and right. now it seems like every other country and continent. Has exploited it in yeah. one way or another. And continues to, yeah, yeah. It continues to. So, uh, yeah. man, with the diamond specifically, okay, they had a civil war uh, in the '90s where it was, uh, you, you know, it was it was crazy. And like a lot of, they, of course, they got the uh, the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, Blood Diamond, yeah, which, which he kind of talks about, explains some of it. But you know, it, it would be basically rebels who would take over the diamond mines. And then trade the diamonds for drugs or trade them for guns yeah. or things like that. And there was some crazy shit. Child soldiers out there, right. you know, like 13, 14, 15 years old soldiers. And, you know, they would come in and, you know, completely destroy a village. Kidnap your and kid. Kidnap the kids. Yep. Then put the cocaine in the coffee of the kids and and drug them and uh, uh, brainwash them into thinking somebody else did it. Did it so, make you look at diamonds different? Oh, completely. Right. For sure. First right. of all, you know, things I didn't understand what the Kimberly process where if you buy a, a dime, if I'm a jeweler and I, I go buy my diamonds wholesale, it needs to be registered through the Kimberly process. Now, mm. what that means is when the diamond is mined in the mine and they got different mines, they got like Flintstones looking mines this like a big ass pit and they got these big ass machines mm-hmm. and then they got the the water mines where they out there sifting in the mud oh, yeah. like the gold shit yeah, the yeah yeah so yeah. there's then there might be more you know out of caves and others but what we saw that's what I saw so they uh and and when they mine basically everything from who owned the own the mine who's actually mining there's it's like labor laws like a lot of this shit is corrupt so they'll pay man they would get like a dollar a day, some shit, 30, 90 cents a day and a, a bowl of rice. That was their pay for being out there in the mud, sifting through the diamonds. That ain't right, a 90 cents a day. And, it, you know, so things like that where, you know, there's there's not like labor laws on that type of shit. You know, it's it's crazy, man, to see that it, it's like this. And then the, the, the crazy perspective is just, just living in this civilization, Western civilization, where you're taught that, you know, the diamond is, you know, that's a symbol of success. That's a symbol of achievement, of pride to show off. But then to see when you try, trace back where it came from all the way, and not all diamonds are mined like that through child labor and things right. like that. But the ones that are, it's like it just it just makes you think about, oh, like, man, what is, is it really worth it? You know, who is getting paid off of this? And then you see, right. you know, so that's why for me going out there it was important that Johnny came with me because I'm like, bro, we got to come out there because – it's certain things on the business end that I don't know. I don't, right. you know, the people that, you know, he the businessman when it comes to negotiating all that type of shit. I'm the marketing person where I'm the face of the company, you know, so he, right. he do what he do, I do what did I do. Did y'all change anything you did based oh, off that trip? Like top. how you bought the diamonds? Yeah, off top, before that, we, you know, we didn't even know of the Kimberly process. Right. So all of that, you know, and then of course, Johnny being from Vietnam where it's it, it, the, the country, the life, the, it was the same. It was a lot similar to what we saw out there. Right. It touched him as well. So for sure, off top, we switched our diamond wholesale up and made sure they were going through the Kimberly process. The ones before, now let me say this. And what the Kimberly process is, let me finish it. When you mine, you know, when you mine a diamond, you have to, you find a diamond, you got to, you know, if I own the diamond mine, I got to get each diamond registered. Then when it's sold, whoever it's sold to, there's like a, a, a it's, it's a, got a number registered to it so it can be tracked where exactly right. it came from. Now, it's, you know, with anything on the black market, you can 
get diamonds. When I when we were out, when we out there, people in the hotel like, hey, you need some diamonds, and I'm like, man, wow. ain't no, like, right. I'm just like, damn, that like, man, that'd be. Well, I'm just tripping like, to myself, thinking like, man, what type of person would like I hot be? Hot nigga slinging waves. Yeah, I'm out here getting Doing the this. plug on the well, diamonds. I'm well. not. We were not there to get the plug on the diamonds. We out there to try to understand or. You know, it's. I think it would be kind of like. I, I mean, I can't say like we can change the world or we could change it, but we personally have to make a change. You know, mm. that's. I think that's yeah, be responsible starts. for what you're doing. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Let's make some noise for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's you know, real. That girl went on jewelry after that. Oh yeah. yeah like, yeah, it went nothing else after that. The whole experience out there, bro. It was everything. You know of. Uh, you know, we we got the UN escorting us. You, you met all the mutilated kids, also. I think in, we met we met right? some of them. There's like a village too. Like it's, yeah. it's some of it. It's it's just it's, it's you know you see kind of like growing up here, man. You know we well, first you taught that everything is perfect, and then you realize it's all lies and bullshit, and then later on you realize the whole world is like that. Yeah. You know that's kind of how it was for me. It was like I grew up thinking that oh America's great, and you're like damn. This is fucked up how it happened or how it still is. And then you go out to other places in the world, and you're like, damn, the world, it really, the world really fucked up how we yeah. treat each other, man. Yeah. This shit's crazy, man. So let's That's take it. it back, right? You and Johnny, you link up. He he the guy crime links you up with yep. Johnny, right? All right. And Johnny's already doing it. He's already, he's already up. Johnny was at that time, this is Johnny's basic story. He came from Vietnam. Johnny ha- actually has a crazy story within his personal family. His uncle was a general in the army in Vietnam. The the, the communist side or no? The, the, the side, side is okay. down with America. Okay. He he his uncle escaped from Vietnam. He was in jail. He escaped as a prisoner of war. It, it took him eighteen times. On his eighteenth time, he finally escaped and made it to America. Got a, a political asylum, everything here. Wow. And then one by one, his family would come over. Johnny made it here when he was young. Uh, I think just out of high school, um, like he might have just graduated, like sometime around like that. And he went to school. He started off doing jewelry repair. He was man. His first six months here, I think he said he made five hundred dollars his first six months, and he was like, "Man, this is the greatest in the world." Yeah, like, it was like he made people out. work hard, you know, as a, as a community. Like they work. Right. Has he gone back to Vietnam since? Yeah, a few times. A few I tried times. to reach out when we did. I also went to Vietnam. We did a film out there. I was trying to reach out to him to be in the film. Damn, oh, yeah. we should have went. Yeah. Uh, it's, the audience, it's already out. I mean, I just wanted to get like an interview from him about it's, us it's, going. It's, yeah, yeah, it's already done. Oh, but I mean, I want to go back, man. Yeah. We, we loved it, man. Part two, man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that up for sure. What's it called? Huh? Coming what? home Vietnam. Oh, thanks a lot, Vietnam. buddy. Coming home Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what's up. It's, that's what's up. We got to check now, that back, out. Now, back in the days, they used to, have, they used to say, who is Mike Jones, right? Now it was where is Mike Jones at? Where is that nigga at, man? I yeah, think... uh, man, your guess might be as good as mine, man. Maybe the number still works. Call it. Word, the it, number, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. What happened? It, it don't. I think he actually. I think the phone company actually like tried to sue him because of that number because they like man, it, he he don't have it no more. So whoever has like they can't use it as a number. You know what uh. I'm saying? Like because. They gave, whoever it is, like right now, it's people texting, calling. This Mike Jones, Mike Jones. So <laughs> that's your phone. <laughs> you like, God damn. <laughs> but, hey, uh, hey, shout out Mike Jones. Where you yeah, at, man? We yeah. wish you the best, man. Yeah, Shit, yeah. you know, hey, what's up, what's up man? Yeah, what to do? This wish you the best. To Number see, y'all got Slim Thug, Bun. Y'all got uh, you. You got uh, who else? You got a zero. Lot of we got my boy Trey the Truth. We got ain't Megan the Stallion from y'all. Megan the Stallion. Shout out Megan the Stallion. Uh-huh. Lizzo. Uh-huh. Uh, Lizzo uh-huh. from Houston too. Travis Scott. Uh-huh. Sauce Twins. Travis Scott don't remind me of none of y'all niggas though. That nigga's out of it. That nigga's not from Houston. That was kind of ill about him though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, That's what's ill about him. You know, he definitely from the moon. Yeah, yeah. And he gives the biggest tribute though when he does it. He reps hard. He definitely reps hard. I I think about that too because you know we've throughout the years there's been other artists that have come out of Houston that didn't come with the traditional H Town sound. You know what I'm saying? But he for sure took it to another level. But I think you know what, what his style. He has more of a like a you know I think he he's kind of affected the it's you know it's I have a bias being from Houston so I'm gonna look at him like oh yeah he just right. you know like shit he, he mm-hmm. God you know but because he's yeah yeah because okay. he's successful so I, I'm rooting for him I want to see all his accolades team, yeah, yeah for sure yeah. but uh, you know just seeing just you know how, just how he do his thing with the production and the rap and then for him to man it, man he on Saturday Night Live that Kardashian sex 
Bring you right to the top. <laughs> Bring you right to the top. Hey, hey, we, hey you know what I mean? Hey, shout out to the Kardashians. <laughs> hey, we what seen that? them on Saturday Night Live, though, with DJ Screw in the background. Mm-hmm. Them type of things, it's like, man, you know. Crazy. And, and that kind of just goes to show, like, you know, even from Houston or wherever, wherever you're from, you know, from Houston, we got a, a wide variety of flavors. You know what I'm saying? We do have our best selling flavors. We got a wide variety of flavors. I even yeah. got Beyonce. For sure. Shout out to Beyonce. Y'all win. Y'all win. Y'all win. They got Beyonce. Yeah, we got Beyonce. Yeah. 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 And I want people to know that Paul Wall said he's not drinking today. So I am yeah. not drinking today. Yeah. Smoke chance. God damn it. Smoke chance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The EFN yes, is going in. Yes, and I respect that. Yes, I respect sir. that. So, about, I, you know, some people come on here and they, they, they don't, don't drink and they act like they drink it sometimes. And, I you know, I don't like that. No, yeah, we don't promote that. I don't promote that. I'm telling you. We'll drink. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. I want to join my guests. Now, we have guests that don't, don't come on or don't smoke or drink, but it's because, like, Joe Button, we had Joe Button on. I'm saying his name right? Yeah, Royce the Five Nine. Royce the Five Nine. Yeah, because they was both they both felt like they were um, Akon. Yeah. Um. Well, not Akon. Uh, Royce and um Joe. They felt like they were addicts at one point, and that's the reason why they they, okay. they, they, they don't indulge anymore. Which is I'm even not addict. I can quit anytime I want. Right. So you don't still fuck with Lena, or do you? Or do you? Huh? Or do you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's. When you get older and then being a, a parent and then right. being a role model and actually seeing kids and then and also having conversations with other artists and CEOs from Houston, from mm. the eras that raised me and mm. having them type of talks with them, it gives you a different perspective on the influence where if I talk about it in a rap or even if I make a whole song about it and I'm wearing an a activist shirt or something. Because yeah, you had the cup at one point, Yeah, right? for sure. I still got it, but <laughs> okay. I, I, even then, I don't, it's at the jewelry store. Some of it is like... Man, I, I, how much of it is it uh, just representing the culture, or how right. much? When does it turn from that to promoting right. the culture and promoting the misinformation of things? And then you know, it's like, man, we got parents on there trying to ban, boycott us. But what do you feel we, about the, those kids that get on the internet and they like this? They look like they go like this, and they can't stay up. Like that's like heroin, right? Yeah, some of it is, but I mean, <laughs> a lot of, you know. I think most of them not sipping drink though. I think most of them is taking somas and popping pills and other. Yeah, they probably add pills for sure. It seems like that. Yeah, but you know, and that's the. It definitely at some point it went because it's it's so funny, man. Being in a you know having growing up musically in my musical career or when I signed to a major or whatever, you go around the country, we sipping drink, we asking, hey, you know what some drink at whatever. And then I I just you know certain places I go, I remember being in places and it was some very high power people in the room. And we sip and drink, they looking at us like we complete crackheads. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, they looking at us like we crackheads, but they was snoring cocaine. <laughs> so I'm yeah. like, they doing what some crack made out of. Yeah, and we just like, damn, it, it, it's just funny to see like how drink has just globally become accepted now. You know, All like right. it's rapid. Like I look on Instagram, there's rappers in Africa talking about sipping drink, and I'm like, damn, they got right. man, it's going down. And right. it's other thing, like I got a homeboy from Poland. I went to Poland. He like, yeah, I got a present for you. What's up? It's some Poland drink. I'm like, damn, uh, what's going uh, on? What the fuck is that like? Right, you know, and, and for sure, anytime we go to Mexico, we always, you know, in La Farmacia, like where the Codina, <laughs> La Codina. <laughs> you know, but it, you know, it ain't, it, it, they make it different all around the world, you know what I'm saying? But it is drink, it is cough syrup all around the world, you know. If sure. you had one song to represent yeah. your, your, your whole career, like, like, like everything, just one song to represent Paul Wall, what would that song be? Oh uh, man, that's a good one, man. Shit, dude. it's definitely been a, a journey, a career, man. My whole, my whole, this is my dream job. So I look at right. this as my career. Like shit, right. every aspect of whatever, even if it parlay into other businesses, right. this is my dream job, dream career. I'm gonna do this as long as I'm able and capable, man. You know, right. so I don't know. I think you know for sure. Uh, I would maybe say drive slow because you know it's a Woo! marathon, not a not a, not a, not a sprint. So I say maybe drive slow would be. Would be and and what what artists from the town inspired you, and then from outside the town? Both. For sure, Lil Kiki was my biggest inspiration. He, mm. um, you know, I grew Lil up on Kiki. the era, the screwed up clique. Everybody in the screwed up. And not clique. Kiki, who Drake talking about? No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know these little niggas out here, yeah, man. Yeah, they are yeah, crazy. Oh, they crazy. crazy. You know what I mean? They yeah. niggas, they'll start running yeah. with the moon. They be in memes and everything. Look, yeah. You know what I mean? This is why it's like this. We got to clean it up. Yeah, got to clean it up. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. So Kiki. He, yeah, look, Kiki, he's the, basically the originator of 
a lot of the Houston culture, mm. especially when it comes to rapping about the culture, putting on, you know, having him, you know, I'm sure he'd be a, a incredible guest because he can give, mm. you know, all kind of background history. You know, it was, it was him, it was him, Fat Pat and DJ Screw mm. where it started Legends. off. And then, uh, you know, it, there was definitely it was people involved. Like, Shout out to OG Ron C as well. OG yeah. Ron C, what to do, for sure. Mm. There was people involved, like, in, in the streets, like Corey Blunt, who was, like, a, a key figure where he, you know, the cars, he was, you know, one of the people in the streets making the money, so he had his cars, right? So it was, like, an inspiration for, for everyone. You know, the, the way we do our cars now, it was all of, you know, he, he inspired me for sure the most. He was my favorite rapper, still is. He was the greatest rapper to me, still is. You know, his wordplay, the things he would say, also just representing, putting on for the for the Houston culture, being that he was somebody I looked to. He was from where I'm from, from the city I'm from. Mm. And he represented where I'm from, where I looked to him as being somebody, you know, up high, who, who who's professional, who made it, who's elite, you know what I'm saying? Where he, shit, he from where I'm from? Shit, that's... That's exactly who I would want to be. You know, definitely he's my favorite. Now, now you got... Like, no, but he didn't answer it from outside. outside yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh? Who inspired him from outside the town? Okay. Uh, inspire, I would say, maybe BG. Um, oh, wow. Maybe... Uh, yeah, you did say... He was yeah, like Hot Boys, for sure. BG was my favorite. BG and Juvenile, they was my favorite. Um, right. BG, for sure. I, I think I... Because I, I, I had the best collection, the biggest collection of his music, for sure. That... That was shit. Even though I, I maybe didn't pattern my rap style off of him, um, he definitely inspired me a lot. Just a, a lot of that too came from the the locality of where he from. You know, any any local rapper, they my favorite rapper, man. Snoop Dogg, he it don't get more local than that. He Long Beach for life, right, right. But he's global. I get it. what you're saying. You right. know, you know, any he local, global. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> global, local. I gotta understand. But you know, all the lo all the local rappers are always are my favorite. You know, when you when you ascend in, with your you know career, they want you to be more mainstream so more people can fuck with it, but. Sometimes you lose your localness, but the local rappers are always the dopest to me, man. They're my favorite. Now, you got like the Eminem pass. Like, what I mean by that is, like, you know how so most people, they, they'll be like, oh, Logic is dope. But then they'll say, Logic is dope for a white a guy. white boy, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then they'll say, uh, 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 you know, MC Search is dope before a white guy. I I don't hear people say that about you. Like, I hear people say Paul Wall is yeah. dope. And I hear people say Eminem is dope. Yeah. Like, like how, how, does, how does that resonate with you? I mean, I, I, I'm I'm very grateful that people appreciate me in any capacity. If they mm. say, are you dope for somebody to wear a hat? You know, right. so even that, you know, it's like, shit, hey, right. at least they think I'm dope. Because, right. you know, I, I got bullied. I got picked on. So, right. I'm shit, I'm glad I got friends now. Right. You know right. 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 Even if they fake friends. I'm glad I got right. 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 Make some nah, noise. I got, I got my real friends. Shout out to my real ones, man. Right. Shout, hey, what's up, Pierre? Shout out to my boy Pierre out there. Goo, what's up, Goo? T Fair. All my real ones out there. But uh, you know, it's funny because we'll think about like we'll we like we, me and my boys will laugh about that like when they had like the top ten greatest white rappers ever, right. and I ain't on the list. Top twenty, top fifty, and we'd be like, damn, I know I'm better than some of them. Yeah. But you know, it's like okay, how should I? I, I don't know. Now how we I, traded you a long time ago. Yeah. You, yeah. On, yeah. you on our team? We yeah, I, saw you the name. I, was, I, I forgot I who we traded you for. Who hey. we traded you for? Yeah. Uh, I, got, I think Wayne Brady or something. Some shit. Hey. Nah, I'm just playing Wayne Brady. Yeah. That's my man. That's yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. But they, oh uh, yeah, shout out my boy. That's my boy Wayne too. Hey, but um. Man, you know, I, I don't know. I, it, I, I, some of it is like Don I, Sterling. I, I just traded you for Don yeah. Sterling. Nigga. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know how yeah. I should feel being yeah. it. You know, like I, I never cared. I never wanted to be a white rapper. I never right. wanted that. And then growing up in Texas, a lot of times people thought I was, especially with a low Hispanic. haircut fade. Yeah. They'd be like, yeah. oh, he Hispanic, or he mixed, or right. he Frenchman from Louisiana. Right. They it was one of the three. Wait, a Frenchman? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like Creole. Just, yeah, like Creole, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. shit, but they call him Frenchman? I've never yeah. heard of that. That's what Creole That's, that's kind of hard. Yeah. You yeah. should be French, I want to be a Frenchman, yeah. nigga. I want to be a Frenchman, nigga. That's the name of my next mixtape, Frenchman. I think, I, I think some of that, too, being on the Switch House mixtapes, my voice is slow. It's pre-internet, so you can't Google what somebody look like. Mm -hmm. So you didn't know True. how what I look like. You hear my music; it's already slowed down, so it's already got effects on it. So you really didn't know what I will, who, what I, you know, what I look like. <laughs> and then I think sometimes people make excuses up like that just because to to give me a pass, like. Oh, no, he ain't white. He, he got to be Mexican. No, no, no. Because, right. because man, it's, it's funny, man. One time I was in Florida, I had a show at Star 69, uh, 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 Roy Jones Jr. Club in Pensacola. Mm. Uh, and it was like one of my first shows, me and Camille in there. And I was at the bar before I'm about to go on. It was a sold out show. It was, you know, it was 
because we was rocking it back then, just even on the mixtape, sold out show. And I'm just at the bar getting a drink. Somebody next to me say to his homeboy, hey, man, I wonder when Paul Wall going on, man. How long we got to wait till Paul Wall going on? I turned to him. I said, oh, what's up, bro? I'm, I'm going to go on like 15, 20 minutes. He looking me up up and down my head like he about to steal off on me. I'm like, okay, oh, you know, I'm like, oh, whatever. Oh, you know, all right, that's what's up. And then I, I left. I'm like, whatever. Then after the show, he came up to me. He was like, damn, I didn't know that was you. I mean, I and he just straight up told me, he's like, man, I don't mean no offense, but I hate white people, man. <laughs> yeah. He was like, he told me, he, no said, oh, he, he was like, I hate white people. He said, so, he said, but really, you my favorite rapper. So when you told me that at the bar, I'm like, who the fuck is that? And I'm like, he said, he, Wait, he really, found out you were white right there. Right then when I come off stage. So he told me, he, he told me, I mean, I'm torn between two worlds right now. Do I like you because you're my favorite rapper? Or do I hate you because you're white? And it, you know, I'll just, but yeah. it was, it, that just, uh, man, it was, <laughs> that's, that's a funny shit. Funny stuff. So whoever that was, man, if you still out there, man, hey, much love to you, homie. I, I give you a discount on the grill or something. Yeah. <laughs> that's, nah. some, that's some funny shit. But right I, I, you know, some of it too, man. I just personally, I like think back. I think because some sometimes I see white rappers and they'll come to me for like man a lot of times, man. I right. you know all man all the time. White rappers come to me for advice on different things, you know. Uh, Rappers always come to you know, right. come, like they all They come to you to say, how do I be a white rapper? I don't imagine that they say that. In so many words, you know, right. it, it'd be, I'll get asked some some questions that'll be, I'll think, how could you ask right. somebody that? Or how could you even think that, like, you know, my advice to anybody, you want somebody like you, just be real, yeah, be yourself. Because right. if they don't like you for being fake, yeah, it's easy to be you. Yeah. It's easy to but be so, you. So, so, I mean, but it's, it's funny sometimes, but at the same time, I, I don't know, because growing up, I had friends of all races. For right. sure, most of my friends were black, but I had Asian friends too. Had a lot of Mexican friends or, or Hispanic. I had friends that were other Dominican, other things too, right. not just Mexican, but Guatemalan. Right. Uh, you know, so, but for sure, most of my friends were for sure black. I had some white friends, but the white boys in my neighborhood were the ones that were beating me up, bullying me. Wow. So it was shit. Wow. It was, uh, you know, I, well, that's just how it was for me that. Comedian era, like I grew up comedian my whole life, so right. me and them were friends, you know, since his kindergarten down there, you know what I'm saying? So, it, you know, not only him, but all our friends from that area, we all, you know, came up together. We are very similar in everything we do, you know what I'm saying? Right. But And we all had friends of all races, but being white, it, it's, it's sometimes it's like, you know, I, when they don't have me on the list, it'd be funny, like, shit. Yeah. Then at the same time, we're like, well, that's, I don't want to be seen as a white rapper or none right. of that. I just want people to see right. me for being dope or whatever. But definitely, you know, being white, being dope for a white rapper or being dope, oh, you dope for such and such. You dope for a girl. You but dope you do that for, to the Puerto Ricans, too, to the yeah, Spanish. They be like, yeah, yeah, he's dope for a Spanish yeah, artist. Yeah. yeah. So I, I relate to Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's good to be appreciated be considered dope, but it's also, you could be dope, not just for yeah. one aspect, just be exactly. characteristic. Dope, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. Now, have you ever had a beef? I'm looking at you and I'm thinking like, you know, you're, you're always been positive. So I'm thinking like, like I, I know you and Camilla there, but y'all, y'all yeah. beefed for a little while, but like, yeah. it, was there it wasn't any... more, it wasn't lyrical, it was more like just personal. Right. But with him, it was real, it was personal because we were best friends and then we took separate paths and you know, but it's very great. Shout out to Pimp C, man. Pimp C has had a huge, he's a huge reason why we reconcile. He talked to us individually, y'all tripping. I also shout out what, to E40. The what, two what, what was the best crazy? The, the two biggest people, it was, you know, I mean, some of it is like not worth talking about because right. it's, you know, Personal bringing shit. up old shit. Yeah, but, right. you know, it's just, we had different views on certain things or, you know, sometimes money might have been involved or whatever. We just, it was meant for us to take separate paths. So when right. it was meant for that to happen, it happened. And thank you know, thankfully we kept it off wax, so that you know what I'm saying you know some of them disses you go back even when you cool you like damn that motherfucker said that about me God damn <laughs> you know so uh, you know it's like man you know we thank God we thankfully thankfully we kept it off wax but E40 was the first one to say man y'all tripping you know how much money y'all can make and by the time you realize it that opportunity is gonna be gone mm. nobody gonna care no more. Or they gonna be on to the next or something like E40 used to always tell us, man, y'all true. Cause he, E40 fucked with both of us. He gave us both advice. We was cool anyway. We was friends, and but he was like a E40 for sure was a big mentor in the game. But specifically, man, you and Kamean are tripping. Then when Pimp C said it too, it's like yeah, got damn. two legends talking yeah. to y'all. Right. And then Pimp C like he came to he spoke individually to both of us. 
Now, what's up with you and Chameleon now, man? What's the problem? Okay, you tripping. He tripping too. Fuck that. Y'all making, y'all tripping. There's money out there. Y'all could be making all this money. Y'all ain't got to get along. This is him, him and E40, I don't know if they talk before they talk to us, but they both told us the same shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, man, uh, and then when he put us in the song, knocking doors down, he shot us out. Then, even before that, you know, the public will come, hey, what's up with you and Kamina? What's up with you and Kamina? What's up with you and Kamina? It's cool, whatever. Then eventually, sometimes people will, the public will die down. Like, oh, be like, oh it's a touchy subject. Let's don't ask them about that. Even when it ain't a touchy subject no more, still they be like, oh, I don't respect. I don't want to ask you about this or that. You know, but then, you know, when PMC put us in the verse, everybody What did like, he say in that verse? He what said, Pow, wow, hey, Kamina still ain't talking. Uh, huh, huh. Money speak, all that bullshit, keep walking. Mm. He basically called out all the Houston rappers saying, y'all tripping with each other. Huh. We beefing, we need to come together. But he mm. said, uh, when he said that, then every, all the public, hey, what Pimp C say, damn, right. man, what y'all gonna do, damn. And everybody, huh. like, it's like, it made it cool to come talk to us right. about it. And then it was, and then it really forced us to come together. And then, especially when Pimp C passed away, right. it was like, hey, we gotta do this for Pimp C, man. You know, like, you know, it's for it's for Pimp C, you know, for sure. They, he had a he was a huge reason why we came back together, squashed our beat. And, and when you should write Pimp C letters um in jail, you wasn't yeah, Paul Wall pal, yet. Man. Yeah, I'm a pimp pal. You, you wasn't the uh, MC yet? You, you wasn't I, I a... was. That was kinda like it was like during my ascension, you know what I'm saying? And then there's different levels. There's you know, you could be a one hit wonder, you could be an underground mixtape. You know, person, you, once you get on the radio, it's different. Once you're on TV and the magazines, it's real different. And it's an era before the internet, before smartphones and shit. Right. So, it, you know, you didn't, you couldn't find out about other artists unless it was put in front of your face. Right. You know, you, you, unless you go to that city and go to a record store, right. you know, shit. The only way you hear it is if... If they if they play it on the radio, which is somebody else controlling, or they play it on TV, which is somebody else controlling, or right. that's it. Shit, you know, you it's tough to hear so about you, other people. You, you guys address and just said, fuck it, let me just let me. I got his address, <laughs> Rotons, <laughs> man, big bro, what it do? Uh, shit, big fan, of course. And I, at that time too, you know, I was all, I was already making a name for myself with Switch House. And then some of it too is, you know, when you say somebody, hey, a free pimp C, you say it on a rap. You know, you ain't trying to be like false claiming saying that, you know, I'm some of it is, shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, and some of it is people, will, they reach like a motherfucker. So it's right. like, if I don't know him, it's it's better to say, man, I ain't never met Pimp C, but free him, I love him. Right. But if you right. act like, oh, that's my boy Pimp C, free Pimp C, but you ain't never even met him. It's like, right. well, you faking like a motherfucker. So, you know, some of that too is, I, you know, is how can I represent, hold it down for him out here while he locked up and communicate with him so that I can represent you know, not like I'm speaking for him and spokesperson or nothing like that, but just at least to communicate, let him know that we holding it down for you out here. If you need something from any of right. us, whatever we, shit, whatever here. And it's, you know, it's funny, you know, the type of advice he would give me would be like, with messing with girls on the road, hey, make sure you strap up them hoes dirty, you know, shit like that. They scam us. <laughs> hey, don't leave your money out in your pockets. They gonna go through your pockets when you were taking a shower, watch out, you uh, know, shit like that. Like, uh, but that's real talk, like uh, shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. I ain't got, you know, I ain't had to lose a Rolex to learn that lesson, you know uh, what I'm saying? Shit, he talk, he, he for sure, man. Yeah, so. I'm not a smoker. But are you smoking without smoking? Uh, <laughs> I feel like the way he's lighting it, <laughs> no, just hit him. I, 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 I smoke backwards, and these these papers not they not lighting up. These you got, I'm for sure. That's why I said, man. I feel like it's a new shit. Like you just light it, and the smoke just hits you. Nah, <laughs> I'm for sure, big smoke. You gotta take it to the face. <laughs> I was like, damn, he's killing it. Uh, that shit, shit. shit ain't lighting up. Now, what the fuck did Chameleon there invest in? That now they yo, they is the man. Yeah, what's he invest in? I don't know, but put your boy down, man. Let me yeah. get in on it. Word. We need a drink chance. We need a financial yeah, advice from him. Yo, I, yo, somebody me told you. me he invested in Lyft. Somebody yeah, he told me the tech shit for sure. Yeah, he. Somebody told me he's with a hedge fund. Uh, some that's you know. Anytime I talk to him about it, he's telling me he's doing he's doing something involving a hedge fund. What the fuck so, is hedge fund? Hedge fund they invest I don't in bad shit. Fucking like, no. Yeah, they, uh. they they take your money and they invest in a bunch of shit. Yeah, but what he doing? I don't know. I'm I'm want to get in on it though. Yeah. But shit, I I don't know what he doing, but it's working for him. Cause and he always tell me, man, I ain't retired. But what what am I gonna do for other than for the love? So he'll still do verses like he did a verse for me on Swinging in the Rain remix. Anytime I ever asked him to do a verse for me, he always did it. And you know, but for sure, you know. How did y'all fix the beef? I'm sorry, I'm bouncing all over the place. A lot of it is, 
you just got to let it go. If we bring mm-hmm. it up and talk about it, we're going to fight. We're going to argue. We got different opinions, perspective. Yeah. We might both be right on whatever we're saying, but right. a lot of it is, hey, we went through what we went through. This The past God led us on. Now right. we're here. What are we going to do about it? We're going to go forward with this, be positive about this, or we're going to, you know, and, and then some of it too is taking the responsibility of publicly beefing with someone else from your city like that. Like, you know, it... it it just sends more of a message that this is how to make it. Like people think, mm. oh, if I troll yeah. you, you'll respond. Because if I compliment you, you're not gonna respond. Mm. And whatever they can do to get a response is is cool. Because no one's they getting overlooked. So it's whatever they can do to get some type of attention. So I don't know. You know, I think a lot of it is just letting shit go and uh, you know appreciating the fact that God took us, like I say, brought us through things to make us who we are. And, you know, I apologize for my wrong. He apologized for his whatever. Even if we ain't wrong, I, man, look, we we sorry, man. Let's make this oh. work. And then shit go from there. So, where, where, where was you at when you found out Butcher Bill passed away? Because I know he yeah. had to be a legend to you as yeah. well. Man, I got cra- a couple crazy stories about Butcher Bill just in dealing with him, man. I got a uh, man. Uh, I heard he's a tough nigga. Yeah, he, he I heard for he's sure. Gangster. Uh, he, he was, man. He, uh, he and he's smart no and too. Uh, I remember I, I met him. I was like 12 years old. This is like the first time I ever flew on a plane. It was in the airport around like 1 o'clock, I don't know, 2 o'clock noon. I don't even remember this because I met Bushwick Bill, and it was the first time I ever flew. All right. You know, so I'm a kid, so I'm like, I remember a lot of that, you know. Right. And uh, So anyway, I, I'm in, in Houston Airport, Hobby Airport. Um some of this too, I know from fact checking with my mom. Hey, mama, where was that? Oh, that was Javi. Yeah, I remember that. She remember. She knew Bush would be there too. So anyway, we, we, I see him in the. Uh, I'm walking. I'm a kid. My mama doing something. I'm 12 years old, so I'm you know almost a teenager. I see him sitting there with a bunch of luggage around him, in like a lounge area of a restaurant, just like you know restaurant, whatever. Just sitting there with a bunch of luggage, he knocked out. Off top, I recognize him, but he's by himself. I'm like, that's Bush with Bill. Why he ain't got all security, rap a lot mob with him, everybody? Like, why he by himself? I'm like, damn, should I go talk to him? Can I talk to him, man? What's up? So I just said, fuck it, I'm going to go talk to him. He knocked out, passed out in a chair. And I just go up to him, shake his tap on his arm. <laughs> you know, I, I look back and I, you know, I, I had a, I had an opportunity to tell him this story too before he passed away, you know. Uh-huh. And it's, but, uh, you know, looking back, I realized, man, you know, not. I'm a kid. I ain't know. I, <laughs> people need their space. You know, I'm like, damn, I was mad disrespectful. Like, coming up to him, waking him up out of sleep, talking to him. Like, but anyway, I, I didn't talk. And he like, oh, what's up? He wake up, get up. I'm like, well, what's going on? And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, what's up, man? You Bush Bill? He's like, yeah, man. I, man, that's what's up. Nice to meet you, man. I, and I'm just asking him, like, kid questions. And you like, ain't even asked for Instagram flicker. None of that. This is before all that. I'm like, for sure, like, <laughs> damn. Uh, but uh, I, I think I might have did get his autograph. And if I did, I still have it. Because I have, I got Big Boy's autograph, too. One time I seen, I got a story I'll tell you. Okay. But yeah. Big Boy. But uh, I, I, um, I met, um, I'm a, man, I, Man, yeah, but anyway, I, I, I'm a big fan of hip hop, especially back then. If someone would come to concert, it could be somebody I never heard of, and I'll go. Yeah, yeah, I'm too young just to uh, see what they look like walking in the club or whatever, or see if I can meet them, or even uh, if I never heard of them, just because uh, it was hip hop to me. It was dope. But anyway, I, uh, but you Bill, I started talking to him, and I'm like, you know, whatever happened on the kid conversation. Eventually, I realized like I'm kind of tripping right now, man, and I'm thinking. <laughs> Eventually, people gonna come back and they gonna be like, "What the fuck you doing? Talk, you know, you gotta go." So I was like, "Damn, all right, Bushwick man, I'm gonna holler at you." And I left, you know, and that was that. Uh-huh. And I, okay, then when I worked, you know, and it was just a, a, a great positive interaction. Mm-hmm. But I thought that's how all rappers were, <laughs> cool as fuck. Like, oh, they yeah. want to talk to you, whatever. They wake up out they out your sleep to talk to you. So then I go to the uh, uh-huh. later on in life when I'm working for Def Jam, uh-huh. it was an artist. That I'm promoting hard as fuck for bringing his records to the DJs, putting his posters up, passing his flies out. He come to town. I try to holler at him, thinking he gonna be bush with cool as fuck. Uh-huh. He, thinking he know what I'm doing for him. Uh-huh. He was rude as fuck. Like man, it, it was a complete opposite interaction. Is was was Bushwick, and it was like, damn, you don't know I'm working my ass off for you. You gonna treat what me like that? What artist is this? He ain't even rapping. I don't uh-huh. even remember who it was. I'm uh-huh. sure if I go back to whatever year it was, I can think back to uh-huh. and X off the list. It wasn't him, wasn't him, wasn't him. Okay, uh-huh. yeah, it wasn't him. But whoever it is, he ain't rapping no more. But then uh-huh. that that led me to be the people's champ because I'm like, 
I want to be like Bushwick. Mm-hmm. I want my interaction to be positive when someone walk away from seeing me. They like, damn, they got a smile on their face. And they're like, man, I'm at, I'm at Paul. Oh, that's real. Damn, he cool as fuck. I don't want it to be... Man, fuck him. I ain't never listened to his music again. I should have stole off on him. Right. Damn, man, I'm going to go at him on a song. Like right. That's how people be. Like you, Man, you shit on people like that. So I'm like, man, I want to be more like Bushwick. Now, let me right. tell you when I met uh, Big Boy. It was like a few years later, maybe like uh, I might have been- But you still a kid. I was still a kid. Okay, continue. Uh, I might have been like uh, I, I might have been like 16, 17. So it was around the same time as I was working for Def Jam. Me and Camille in there, it was like w- where we was just- Old enough to drive, but we ain't had no car. Mm. So I, they had a, a concert come through Houston, and it was uh, uh, Outkast. Uh, I believe it was Eric Badu, and it was uh, The Roots and uh, Cypress Hill. I believe that sounds crazy. Um, line of yeah, it was. It was shit. It was crazy, but it was at the time when all of them were new artists. Too. So it was like Quest Love opened up. There. I mean, or not Quest Love, or the Roots. Because I met Quest Love there too. He was uh, cool as fuck too. He just uh, standing at the, uh, you know, one of the uh, what you call it booths, and I'm go up to him like, oh shit, that was you on stage? Yeah. <laughs> he talking like, damn, man, that's crazy. That's what's up. And I'm going uh, back. Me and Kamina. Okay, me and Kamina was at the show. We're sitting at the, uh, the, the okay, it's the, the the Cynthia uh Mitchell Woodlands Pavilion where it's an outdoor pavilion. They got a lot of these all around the country. Not the same name, but they got these type of venues where they got like front row seating and then they got like lawn seating in the back, grass yeah. seating. Okay, so it'd be like uh, it'd be like a, a chair seating and then it was a, a, a walkway and then it was like a six foot up chaired seating. So me and Kamina, then behind that was all the grass. Okay, so me and Kamina are sitting in the front row of the back chairs. So where the walkway is in front of us, we about like six feet up, eight feet up, but we at the edge front row, so people walking. So Outcast reform, they get off stage and they walk, they walk through. Uh, I see Big Boy walking, and I'm like, he walking with two security guards. I'm like, oh shit, come in, there I go, Big Boy. Damn, what's up, man? We gotta stop him. We gotta. And he like, well, what are we gonna do? We way up here, way up. Like, what are we gonna? We gonna go race him down? And also, me and Kamina are very different in these perspectives. Kamina has more of a Houston mind frame when it comes to celebrities, and especially rappers. And this is the mind frame. I ain't finna be on his dick. <laughs> I like him, but I'm not finna ride his nuts. Uh-huh. So that's like, shit, Houston mind frame. It'd be a sold out show. Everybody mean mugging you. But they love you, but yeah. they just mean, they don't want you to know they love you because uh-huh. they don't want to be embarrassed. Or so, you know, or they don't, whatever. They don't want you thinking they on their nuts. So I'm more of a, Man, I love that person. Let me go tell them I love them. You know, right. Kamin's like, yeah, I love them too, but I ain't gonna be on the back. <laughs> so we, right. we sitting there and we like just sitting on the front row. Big boy walk by. I'm like, man, come in, the big boy. He's oh, whatever, you know, whatever shit. Man, I said, fuck it, I gotta go. I gotta say what's up. I just hop down, jump over the thing, just like I'm running from the cops, jump over the fence. I hop down, jump down by six, eight feet. I land, chase him down. Him and his bodyguards was like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? What's going on? I'm, I'm still like somewhat of a kid. You could tell I was like 15, 16. So I might have looked adultish. You know, I might have had like a little baby whisker mustache, but they just, you could still tell I'm young. Like, I ain't finna come up, like, fight them or nothing like that. But I, and they like, whoa, what's going on? I'm like, man, oh, big boy, man, I'm a fan. I'm just a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Well, you know, can, I, can you take it? Can you sign something? He signed something for me. I still got that autograph to this day, too. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, see, I would collect things like that. Like, that's what I'm saying. I, I can't remember specifically. Now, you know, I for sure got to go back and, and tell right. Bushwick. I mean, I, I got to go I gotta go see uh, uh, if I got that Bushwick autograph. I think I still do, because I, I think it was on, like, a napkin. Uh, uh-huh. But in, anyway, I, I know Big Boy signed the actual ticket. I still got that. But anyway, that was my big boy story. But going back to Bushwick, when I saw Bushwick, I mean, later on, and I, I see him all the time. Like, I would see him at shows. We would, you know, sometimes we'd perform <laughs> together and we'd be kicking him backstage, chopping it up. He also has a son I, always, I connected with for a while. Me and him was, was always real cool. We still, you know, still are, but like for over the years, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I got to know him and his son, you know, whatever through the years. But more recently, when it came out that, you know, he had stage four pancreatic cancer, that was kind of like where, you know, they kind of did like a kind of call to action. You know, you fuck with Bushwood, you kind of let them know because the clock kind of ticking. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it was like one of them things where, you know, I was, you know, for sure reached out just to tell them, man, how much, you know, I appreciate them, you know, whatever I love for them. And we always, you know, we had a, you know, we had a, you know, I always had a great connection over the years. But then he, he told me, he was like, hey, I'm working on an album. It's going to be basically my my last solo album, you know, you know, whatever. 
you know, you, you don't really want to say it like that at the time, but that's kind of like how he was saying it. Like, you know, I'm doing another solo album. It's basically going to be my, you know, is it, you know, you down to get on it. Of course I'm going to get on it. <laughs> Shit, right. I'm a professional rapper and it's an icon legend. Yeah. Somebody I look up to inspire me from my very first interaction with a rapper of uh, him, me wanting to be like him, to be a people champ. So, hey, of course I'm going to get on that. So, you know, I went to the studio with him, got to kick it, you know, chop it up with him. And really, you know, I you know, I did my verse, it was cool. That was, you know, we actually did two songs. But um, uh, you know, I'm 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 kinda quick in the studio, so I did my thing, that's cool. But after that, we just chopping it up for hours upon hours, you know, and like I say, you know, he's somebody I've known throughout the years, but our it would be we backstage at the concert. So we still might be chopping it up for a couple hours, you know, before getting ready to go on, but it's a group setting kind of, you know, where it's a party atmosphere. So this like real intimate one, you know, just me, him, you know, his son, a couple other people, the engineer, a couple other people, you know, we just in there just chopping it up, talking about all kind of shit. Just, and I got to tell him, uh, you know, I, and I, before I went to the studio, I told my mama, I said, mama, guess who I'm going to the studio? Who? Bush Ruth Bill. No, man, for real. You remember when you met him in the airport? I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm calling him. I'm telling you. I'm like, man, when? I'm trying to figure out, get like a real, when was that? You remember that was? She kind of tell me when it was. Oh, that's when we did this and that. That's the first time you flew. I kind of, you know, so it, it kind of, you know, we remember that kind of thing. So when I when I told Bush, I said, Bush, well, I'm going to tell you a story, man. I tell him a story. <laughs> Shout out to Bush, man. Right. I tell him a story. He say, I said, Bush, I met you when I was 12. He say, all the way there, I tell him the whole story. He say, Oh, yeah, that was the Resurrection Tour or whatever tour. Yeah, it was the Hobby Airport yeah, in the summer. Yeah, I remember that. You said, uh, were well, you wearing summer clothes? And I'm like, yeah, man, they don't even remember that. But he uh, said, yeah, you were wearing I remember. He said, I don't know if that was you, but I remember meeting the youth in the airport wearing uh, wearing summer clothes. You know, was that you? I'm like, man, you remember that? That's crazy. But I, nah, I don't know if he really did remember that or he was just kind of putting on. But still, you know, I, I, I definitely... I, you know, I'm glad I got to share that with him to to let him know how much you know he's See, definitely. Don't ever make fun of my carrots one ball. Well, hold on, let's let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's let's all give let's all give him a moment of silence, yeah. y'all. Rest in peace, Bushwick Bill. Yes, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> now most people, now most people I see with grills when they smoke or they eat, they take the grills off. You don't you don't take the grill off when you smoke or eat. I mean, when you when you own the jewelry good? store, I get to cheat. I can cheat. You know what I'm saying? Right. I got the jewelry store, so it ain't it ain't nothing. So but. so why why do people do that? What is it? Mess it up or something? Well, think about it. You got you know your chain right there. Mm -hmm. If you you got to eat, let's get you know we getting lasagna. All right. You ain't gonna dip it in with lasagna. Exactly. And then you got to let me get a coffee. Dip it in a coffee. Let me get a milkshake. Dip it in a milkshake. Let me right. eat a hamburger or whatever. Let me whatever you know. So it's like it, you think about it. You don't. You wouldn't do that with that. It, it's it grills. It's your teeth, but it's still precious metal and and jewels. So right. you know you gotta. Some of it comes with, especially the smoking. It will tarnish the the metal, make it you know change the color a little bit. But when you buff it out, it's brand new, back to new. Right. Uh, and then different qualities of the gold will get dirty quicker. Same right. with the diamonds, you know. So when you got a higher carat gold, it, you can smoke. It's not a big deal. Uh, but you know, just it's just proper grill care. Uh, me, I don't, you know, I, I, you know, whatever. I don't really tend to take my grill out too much. You know, right. I'm actually about to um, get some. I'm about to go permanent on there and get some, get something new. I'm a, I'm a permanent, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna those those are, obviously those are the ones that don't come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so uh, is there a difference between regular gold and dental gold? Well, the dental gold, uh, I think when they say that, they mean like the a higher quality of the carrot of gold. So typically, there's like. 10 karat gold, 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold. Now there's 22 karat gold sometimes, 24 karat gold. Bruno Mars made a song about it. So, But when you go to buy jewelry, it's typically 10 karat, 14 karat, or 18 karat. 18 karat being the higher, karat being the best. But also, it's boys whipping that gold up, man. Boys will whip that gold up with silver or some other things. You test wait, it. Wait, it what do you mean? Back. What do you mean? I don't understand. It'll be six karat gold oh. and, or whatever, and they'll dip it. To look like 18 karat or dip it, I actually got a song called, what Zaytoven called, 18 karat gold, no dip, because boys will get 10 karat and then dip it to look like 18 karat or 14 karat gold. Uh, in, you Holy know, shit, I ain't know um, that. Yeah, but- the, I ain't know that. Yeah, it's, uh, but the, the I think, I think you know, I don't know, I could be wrong, um, but I think when with the dental gold, what they mean is a 22 karat or, or the higher, higher karat, but, or, which is usually, I think, 18 karat, 
all the dentists I know use the 18 karat. Shit, we do the goals for all the dentists and it's 18 karat. Ah. Uh, uh, but that's that's actually how Johnny start how he started with the grills was he was already doing jewelry repair, already doing a few custom things like for jewelry stores, not for uh-huh. customers, but for jewelry stores. So right. then it got to be the dentist would come to, hey, I'm making, you know, I need you to make these gold teeth for a customer who's getting right. them permanent. And then Johnny like, damn, I could do that on my own. What, I, they can come right. to me. Why are they going to you? They can come straight to me. Shit. And then that's basically what it was. What was the what was the first order like? Because because obviously you was a rapper, so what, that, this was your side hustle, the grills, right? It was around the same time, you know. And oh, oh. I first started rapping with the Swisher House. My first mixtape with the Swisher House was in 1999. Before that, I was rapping with Kamina, doing talent shows or whatever, just trying to make it. But uh-huh. you know, basically, wasn't no rap career. It was a you know, we was just you know. What was the first order with you and Johnny <laughs> where um, you, you was like, you know what, I can make some money off of this shit? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I actually. Mm-hmm. Well, I, this is what I'm doing. I was working for Crime where I, I worked There's at- the a, other Jewy team yeah, guy. Yeah. I was working for him, and it was at a store where we sold Swiss House tape. It was like a hood store. Uh-huh. Like, you know, uh, uh, you know, like a bodega kind of, but we don't call it that. It's just right. like just a store, corner store, where they, we sold uh, Swiss House mixtapes. We sold hood t-shirts that'll just have the name of your hood type shit on there, Northside or whatever, just type of sayings, type of shit on there. And we'd be in there selling grills, selling gold teeth. But uh, after a while, you know, as shit started picking up, it was like, okay, I got to I gotta move out of here. I got to, you know, I can get money in other ways. But I, I really, originally, I started out working for Crime doing the promotions. That's the first time where I actually ran a shop, ran a grill shop. And then even then, it was still working for Crime. He paid me a salary, and I would sell grills. And I was a salesman, but he did everything. He took care of everything. And then eventually, he was like, hey, look. I'm gonna do something for you, man. I'm gonna introduce you to Johnny, man. It's, right. you know, he was like, all right. I was like, bet, shit, yeah, yeah. And he basically gave. Was Johnny making it for him? Yeah. Oh, okay. All but right. Crime had different people too. Crime had somebody in New York that was making them. He had somebody in, uh, you know, uh, in, but Johnny did the majority because right. it was local in Houston. But he had multiple. He, had, he got all kinds of stuff going on. But, but he, it was it wasn't like a celebrity who came to you and like. And, and then you was like, you know what? This is this is something I'm gonna invest my money in. Well, I think it was just. Nah, it was more like just a hustle. Cause mm. Lil John was the first celebrity I did, but before that it was just oh, I was making money, man. I was making all oh, kind of money selling grills, and I would it, it, the the hustle is you pass out flyers with your number on it, with the prices on it, uh-huh. and people will see it. You go to all the different cities or towns that in a three four mile radius or three four hour radius. You know what I'm saying? So wow. I would go to Dallas, San Antonio, Austin. The same places I'm going to sell Swisher House tapes, because keep this in mind too, I was selling Swisher House mixtapes before I was rapping on them. I mm. was promoting and distributing. I would press up, the, I would press up the, the CDs and the tapes, and I also would distribute them and go to the stores, fulfill the orders, take them back to Watts or Ron C or G Dash. That's what T Ferris was doing too. We came in at the same time doing that before I was rapping into Swisher House. So I got to seeing. Shit, the same grill hustle in Houston, I can do this out of town. So I go to Dallas, all these places, put my number down with flyers with the prices. They already were traveling to Houston or places to get grills or to whatever, whoever they local hood dentists. But it would, it's like it, it ain't a good selection of people to go to. It's only like one or two or maybe three in Houston. At that time, they were doing permanent grills. They were like hood dentists like doing that. So it's like, shit, where can you go? So, uh, you know, doing that. It, it would just work. And then I would go to Louisiana, same thing. Lafayette, Lake Charles, Opelousas, on the Baton Rouge. And then even every direction, you know what I'm saying? So it, it just, it got to be a, a real hustle for me. But Lil John saw it and was like, he knew who I was as, I was at the time I was as DJing. Well, oh, okay. I was oh. DJing and I was an artist, which I was a freestyle artist, but I kind of, a lot of people, you know, I, I kind of got more recognition as a DJ at that time. <clears throat> At that time, from other DJ artists, DJ Paul, Wall? DJ Paul, okay, Wall. Okay. the other artists, I think a lot of they more respected me as a DJ because I wasn't hound, hounding them for verses and all. Let me act like I'm friends with you and all that. It was right. more like I'm a DJ. I, I play your music. They respected me for that because I really will support people I fuck with. Okay, and uh, whereas the fans fucked with me as being a rapper, they didn't give a fuck about me DJing. The fans huh. fuck with me as being a rapper, but the the other artists they fucked with me as being a, a more DJ. So I, it was a lot of other. The artists I fuck with, I fuck with Ti real tough, real heavy. 
it, you know, even as I was rapping with the Swisher House and, you know, had, you know, when 24s came out and, you know, all around then. But it was more as me being a DJ. And then as the artist thing came, it was like, oh, shit, you rap too? I didn't know you rap. And then it also, let me just, you know, it, it just, it, it worked for me. Because I saw how people, you know, t- man, everybody is a rapper or a DJ or a producer. Yeah. Right. Everybody. So it, everybody who's seen any type of success, and there's all type of different levels, you get Everybody coming up to you. Hey, I want to be where you at. How can right. I be there? Can you? How can you put me on? Put me on. Put me on. Put me on. So shit, it's man. I would just see how you would get turned off, shut out. As I'm a rapper, hey, put me on. Put me on. And they don't want to fuck with you. Mm-hmm. But shit, I'm a DJ. Oh, you? Hey, yeah, I'm a DJ. I can play your music. Then they, oh, you can play my music. Shit, sure. let me fuck with you. Shit, it just was like reverse psychology. And then when they when they, when they would find out that I rapped, it would be, damn, you ain't even tell me you rap. <laughs> It would be like, yeah, because I ain't trying to put you out like that where you ain't want to fuck with me no more because, you know, you see how I go. So right. it, it worked for me. You know what I'm saying? I just, I, I let the, I let my other side hustles, you know, grow so that when I had an opportunity for me to be an artist or a rapper, you know, I had all kind of money-wise, monetarily, I had my money. So I didn't rely on record sales. My network was already strong because I was already distributing other people's music. And I was a salesman selling grills and selling music. So I knew what I, you know, to sell my own music, being an artist, what it kind of took. I knew being a salesman who distributed the Switch House tapes, sometimes I could tell which, you know, what the fans, they they fuck with this artist or that artist. So they like when you say this or that. Or, and it's it, like and, you're on your A&R and shit. Right, right. right. So, they, they, yeah, I could adjust. Like, okay, they like when I do and, that. And you and Johnny's partners on the whole jewelry store or just the grill part? On all of it. On all, all of it? it? Yeah. Oh, okay. God damn it. The grill. So you damn near got your own jewelry store. Damn it. Jesus. We actually, we, we we branching out. We about to branch off. We, we still got the Sharpstown store. Of course, we got the new one, uh, 6224 Richmond in right. Houston, the big one, the two-story. Johnny got his own. He, Johnny went from doing jewelry repair in his garage to selling grills in the mall to having his own mall, man. So, mm. you know, man, you know, it, it's it's definitely how, how does one if, a, if somebody wanted to start getting in the jewelry business, how how do you how do you even begin? This is why I love Johnny, bro. Right. He changed my life as me, me being a hustler. I can sell anything. I can hustle right. anything. So right. when you got that type of skill, you know, how can you do that without going to jail? How can you right. do that it, it, with integrity to and respect where you're not selling something that's whack or corny, or how can you do that and make a career out of it? How can you do that? You know, just all that. So for me, it was a a, a whole lot of, you know, I, I love grills. I want grills, so I want to sell them. Then I can make a lot of money off of this because a lot of people at the time who were selling grills were charging too much money or were doing bad business where they take your money in your grill, mold, but you wouldn't get your grill. And oh, you got to right. hound them for their grill, you know. Uh-huh. So I just saw myself as... Man, if I can do a good business, I'm a win. Uh, right. And Johnny gave me that opportunity. That that's what Johnny started off as. He right. would give wholesale well, to well, other. Well, jewelry. did you did you did you fund him first? How did like how did like like you know what I'm saying? Like no, nah, no, nah, he Johnny. It was all Johnny. Okay, so me, I, I would when I'm working for crime, doing grills, doing selling grill molds, whatever, doing anything I'm doing with crime, I would be like. The, the driver drop off the molds. So I'm at Johnny's dropping off the molds, picking up orders, things like that. I'd be in there and it was a small shop. And every time I ever went in there, he would always be getting into with somebody. He got this thick Vietnamese accent uh-huh. and it'd be somebody who is from the hood of any race. They was from some type of hood. So they had a hood accent uh-huh. or they was from out of state. So he didn't know what the fuck they were saying. They didn't know what the fuck he was saying. Uh-huh. And it would just be a... A translation. Oh, no, no. All he's saying is this. Oh, no, no, Johnny. He want this. No, he want this. <laughs> and then, you know, the, after that, eventually it got to be a, hey, you, you Paul Wall? While I'm in there dropping off grill molds and shit, people say, hey, you Paul Wall? And I'm like, I, I saw they know you. Oh, I'm a rapper too. And he's like, you a rapper? And you sell grills, whatever. And I'm mm. like, yeah, well, you know, some hustle, whatever huh. shit. <laughs> and then it got to be a, shit, we can do this together. And we way stronger together. And Johnny always from the jump. Johnny got a part of my music too, just like I got a part of the jewelry mm. store. Johnny told me from the jump, man, hey, look, the same way you love jewelry, that's how I love music. I can't make no music. I don't know how to make music, but I want to be a part somehow. Whether it's doing concerts, you know, just investing, something. I want to be a, I want to be a part. So that's why we always had kind of meshed the way we have. The jury oh. is his thing. I do the marketing, I do things like that in terms of the marketing, outreach. 
uh, a like big part of what I do is, shit. yeah, a big <laughs> part of what I do is customer service when people have problems. Of course, that's when people don't really call me unless they got a problem, and they got a problem. Of course, we are gonna smooth it over. That's our thing too. Is it? You know, customer service is number one to us. But the business run itself, he run it, so I'm able to do my music and collect a check at the same time, cross promote and everything I do. But uh, it, it it just it just was like a why why not? We got to team up. Let's do this together. And me, I'm a very loyal person, so I'm not the type to let me do this on my own without you to x you out so that I can make a little bit more money. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a let's build this up together. You got kids, I got kids. We'll pass this on to our kids together. You know, I'm more of a, a builder than I am of a let me go do it on my own nomad style. Even though, Charlie, you got your girls? <laughs> let's, see, let's, see what, let's see what the quality of those girls are. Yes, sir. Where'd you get those girls, Charlie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, but this why this why I love Johnny because. Uh, yeah, uh, hey, uh, hey, 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 nah, but I, it might. You looking good? You shining? So it might not. I don't know. You look know, shining. Hey. Hey, but this is why I love Johnny, because the same opportunity he gave me to go hustle and make a, a living and make money off of this, man, he get that to, we got thousands of wholesale clients wow. around the world. So that, you know, instead of him franchising off and having a Johnny Dang and company in every city, there's like 10 Johnny Dang company people who are getting their wholesale from us, but they're their own business. Wow. So I, I, you're like that's, empowering them. Yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate that he empowered you to be your own hustler yeah. to to build your own business for your kids. You that's know what I'm saying? Good, I, that, that's why I love that's Johnny because he get an opportunity. I've seen him time and time and time again get that opportunity. To, well, what's the first thing a person should do if they want to get into the jewelry <laughs> business? Well, I mean, because you had Johnny, but um, I would say this: no matter what, it's very easy to get tempted to. Run off of people's money or charge uh, them more and get them. Ah, uh, they paid ten thousand, but let me act like they paid nine or eight because uh, uh, I need uh, some new rims or uh, something, you know. So I think good business and customer service is key. A one key to a long term business. Now, if you want to go out and hit licks, come up real quick. That's a completely different business structure. You know, my the business advice I can give you is for long term careers or something you could pass on to your wow. kids and make yeah, millions of dollars off of. Yeah. yeah. If you want to make a couple thousand real quick, you can go hit licks and burn people huh. on their orders. But that if you want to make last. some millions, yeah, you right. can't do that type of shit. But right. that's what, man, uh, you know, real talk though, if you want to sell jewelry, the best advice I would give to you is if you like, man, go talk to Johnny. Right. We got a, we have a whole department, this a wholesale department. This is just as big as the gold casting or diamond setting or shipping or any other department we have. The wholesale wow. department is huge, man. And that's also why we're able to sell 400 grills a day. You know, it's, it's crazy to be to be able to do this much, but it's not because they- I need another grill, God damn it. Yeah, you know we yo, got yo, you. Yo, you know yo, we got you, big but bro. But now you was in a movie called um, You Hope They Serve Bear in Hell? Oh, yeah. My boy Tucker Max. What's up? <laughs> How the hell you get involved in a movie like that, nigga? Man, uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, man, it's a, you know, I, I, I'm not that good an actor, but <laughs> I think that might be where it started. Like, they put me in the, in the movies that, that not the, not, not the uh, mainstream successes, but that was they did make some money off of that. It's based off a book. My boy, it's, it's a real person named Tucker Max. He got a book. It was on a New York Times bestseller for like. Ten years, something crazy. Like he brought, I think he might have broke a record or something. He was, on, it, but the book is like a, a story he wrote, which is basically like uh, adventures of getting fucked up and, and fucking uh, girls and just reckless shit. Mm-hmm. Hey, I fucked three girls in one night and I ain't wear a hey. condom. I got so oh, drunk oh. and I threw up all over the floor here uh-huh. and there. Oh, uh, hey, one time I had to shit and this girl gave me head while I was shitting. Like uh-huh. it's like and disgusting this is on the best type of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's all true stories and uh, uh, you know of him. And I had to ask him. I was like, hey, bro, these all can't be your stories. It got to be like you and like four of your homeboys and you all put them together. But he like, well, it's just me. But anyway. <laughs> he, he, I met him through somebody else. When I, the first time I went to Iraq um, with the USO, I went with uh, my boy Jamie Kennedy and Stu Stone. And um, Jamie Kennedy, you know, the actor, comedian, oh, yeah. he, he had a book out. And uh, <clears throat> Tucker Max, he, uh, he's the one who wrote it. He, like, co-wrote it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So anyway, I was he was talking to him. And he was like, oh, shit, hey, my boy Tucker Max said, what's up, man? You know, he, he, he helped co-wrote my book. And I'm like, oh shit! Tell him what's up. I'm trying to write a book too. Anyway, he wrote a bunch of books. He he he, co- he helped Tiffany Haddish write with her book. You know, I, I don't. You know, I wasn't in on they writing. Part. I don't know how they right. do it, but a lot of times when they write books like that, you like do an interview and then it'll be kind of transcribed, kind of or whatever. I don't know, but 
whatever anyway. But if you look on the book, the, the last black unicorn is say Tiffany Haddish, Tucker Max. So I'm yeah. like, oh shit, my boy, I seen I seen that. I was wired up when I seen that. Wow. But yeah, he uh <clears throat> that's how I met him. And I'm like, damn, he's like, yeah, I wrote a book, it's on a New York Times bestseller. But you know, he like co-wrote he like a bunch of other books. So we got to be cool and he like, hey, they gonna and I told him I was like, hey bro, if they I can't act for shit. I ain't been in but like three or four movies, but say, man, if you make the, because he, he said they're going to make a movie out of the book. I say, hey, bro, put me in the movie, man. I try to get in that movie just because I'm trying to get a movie credit. So that's how I, that's how it basically happened. He put me in the movie. Uh, he basically wrote me in the movie, which was like a, a parody of myself, kind of like, my, you know, my name in the movie was Grillionaire. Uh-huh. Was just, uh, <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, shout out to my boy. What's up? Now, now you got a real, you got a real you married a real sister. You ain't married like a fake black girl. Shout you married to a real, real black. You have what? Is, what has been like like that? Because um, what is what does that life have been? Because obviously we know you white and you married a a, a a black girl. Like, has that been pluses for you? Have that have people critiqued you for it? Like, you know, it's, different people have different perspectives. You know, it's she's my dream woman. Aww. Any, anything Aww, I can. Let's make it. Nah, but anything I could ask for or could want in a partner is, you know, she that for me. So I don't want nothing else. I would. Don't I never, touch your hair, though. Don't yeah. touch your hair. <laughs> Tell her. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I don't. I, I never, you know, I never been married to nobody else or nothing else. So I, like that. So I never even, you know, been. In, this is she really the first serious, serious relationship that I had ever been in long, long term like that. Even we got married on our two year anniversary. So she, I don't know. For me, you know, we get it different ways. Of course. If you look right. at the comments on the post or something, you'll see all kind of shit sometimes. But I think, <clears throat> you know, if you racist, then you're going to find some racist right. out of right. it or whatever. Right. Or, you know, there's, there's definitely people on both sides who got a problem with it, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. But, right. hey, man, I wish them the best. I hope they be happy. You know, I'm I'm happy. I'm 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 proud to be married to it. This is what I wanted this, as a, right. being my parents were divorced. Right. And, you know, I, this is what I wanted, man. I want to be married. Shit, I'm not trying to be like rapper married where I'm married, but I'm fucking on the side. All right. You, you said know, rapper no, married. Yeah. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. I caught it. I caught it. Or, 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 just, or just or just just uh entertainer married where yeah. you don't tell nobody you're married. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Or just, right. you know, hey, I'm cause it even you know, as a child growing up, if I want to think about what rappers, you know, from being whatever age I was when I first heard hip hop, what 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 age, you know. Who's married? Who talks about being married? Who's proud to be married or any of that? You don't hear none of that. Only thing you see is scandal, side bitches, baby mamas, dogging girls out, love songs, broken, you know, hey, that's different. The love spectrum or the the interactive spectrum, you know, whatever, it's big, but you don't hear too much of uh, y'all married and, you know, shit like that. Or, Real shit. You know, whatever. Or, or you just see people talking about it at all. You'd be like, damn, I didn't even know they was married till you find out somebody got divorced. You know, all like, right. damn, you got divorced? I didn't even know they were married. Shit. Right. But, <laughs> but, you know, so for me, it was like, uh, who do I look to as a role model to be, you know, to be married <clears throat> in entertainment or be a rapper that's married or interracial? I never really looked at any of it like any of that. But it, who do I look to? For just to be a marriage role model, especially in rap music, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. shit, it wasn't a lot at the time. Now it's gotten to be more, you know right. what I'm saying? So I, you know, it's a, a, a brotherhood, all the other married rappers, you know what I'm saying? And right. shit, it be it's cool, you know. And what parenting saying? too. Now people yeah. more proud to talk uh, about being parents. For sure, man. That's something right. that it, it goes a long way in us. A lot of us, <clears throat> you know, like growing up having bad experiences or, or coming from a broken home or not having a father or having a father addicted to drugs, like, you know, all of them things was like, okay, who do I look to, you know, as a role model in rap as well? Like, shit, you know, it's something that, to be proud of being a father. All of these things, to be married is something to be proud of. To, to be a father is something to be proud of. So it's something oh, yeah. I, I try to do, you know, it's what I wanted. It's my dream. I want to be married, have kids, and be happy. Shit, right. that's, shit, that's cool. I'm living my dream like a motherfucker. Now, you went shit. on tour with Tech Nine. Yeah, my boy. Like how how and and Ill Bill as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. How, yeah, how, yeah, how, how was that? It was oh, because Tech Nine tour like lit. a wrestler. Yeah, that nigga, yeah, that nigga tour three hundred and ninety four days yeah. of the year. It, we <laughs> tour, we actually toured twice. Once we toured in like two thousand and three, but it was just like I think four or five shows. It wasn't a whole lot. The fourth probably is the, the label is yeah and stuff. yeah. Well, maybe like at the beginning. Yeah, time. the beginning stages. Know, yeah. Even then, it was a weird experience showing up to the first show 
It was, I think it was in job. I don't know if it was the first, it was one of the first shows. Was he painting in the face already? Yeah, yeah, okay. he was. I, I remember we did a show in Joplin, Missouri. And it was like, we should, we pull up and there's people waiting there. But they got on black trench coats. It's hot as fuck. They got on black trench coats. Huh. Oh, his fans their, is crazy. Yeah, they All got right. their face painted. Right. And we like, man, what's going on? This ain't, we wasn't, something we wasn't used to when we go in the show. the Jigga right? No, yeah, that's the that, Juggalos. That, the yeah. Juggalos. Yeah. 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 We uh, like that. He got was, technicians. That's, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So we, it was something we wasn't, we didn't like know what to expect. And it was, it, it was a dope interaction to see the combination of his fans and my fans. You know, because you can see some people were there for me, some people were there for him, some right. were there for both. But it for sure was a, a a dope experience that first time we did the first shows, and that was my first interaction with Juggalos like that, and it was right. dope. Just seeing, you know, I, I thought that was so dope to have fans that, especially in hip hop, bro, because being a fan is not cool. You you can't be no fan. You a dick rider. It right. ain't no fan as you a dick rider. Nah, so they real fans. Yeah, you been, so, you been to the gathering of the Juggalos? Yeah, nah, I haven't been to the gathering. I've been to of the two Juggalos. of them and this shit is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah they scared the shit out of me. But it, it, it was, it was it, it's dope to me to see people that are proud to be a fan of you and they and if you don't like it, they ready to fight you. Yeah. That's yeah. like what I, that's how Zero is to me. His fan base. Zero has a my boy Zero from Houston. He got a fan base where if his fans if you talk bad about Zero, you say, man, they're going to fight you right there on the spot. I mean, you tripping. So, you know, this it, they don't paint their faces, but they, man, they it's ready true to fight. It's true fanism, man. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I, I, I was, uh, you know, happy to see that for sure when I experienced that. And that was the first time. And the second time we went on tour, it was like a 60 city show, 60 day, uh, 60 yeah, city it, tour. Yeah. It was crazy. I'm like, man, that motherfucker tour 60 all, shows back to back to back. And he, he's reaping Ooh, the benefits of it too. Yeah. yeah. But was, it, it taught me a grind like that. Like, damn, okay, I see the long term grind. Merch, of, he yeah. got everything on his He shit. got mad real estate yeah. in right. Kansas City. Like, right. he, he's killing it. Man, he pulled up in a Maybach. Shout out to Strange Music. When we, went to, when we went to Kansas City and we did the show, he said, I want to bring you by my compound and show you my studio. He pulled up in a Maybach. You know what I'm saying? He pull up to the multi-acre compound yeah. and we get buzzed they in by security. In that yeah. yeah. And you see the the back warehouse where they got their hundred or fifty like Costco. different, yeah, different right. sets from show sets. Like they, you know, you, you go to the other side where you see the warehouse with all of their merch yeah. over the years, everything from socks to jerseys, it's t-shirts. Impressive. It's like, damn, then you see the other side where they got the studio, they got the paperwork, everything. It's like, damn, that's the real independent, that's the dream right there. The, the way they got everything, it's just, it's very that's inspiring. Big up, big up the tech mind. Yeah. Big up the tech mind. Yeah. Oh, let's make some noise for tech mind. Tech mind, yeah. what's going Hey, he be rapping his ass off yeah. too, man. He be, boy, he be now, rapping 2011, his ass off. Now, in 2011, you collaborated with Silicon Valley-based uh, company, Jump Shot Media, to create a battle rap game. Battle rap. Yeah. Is, is that still lit? I, I don't know if it's going, if it's still active right now. I think it's another one. I seen another one that Burner did. Oh, yes, yeah, right. Like, um, but yeah, it was kind of dope. It was like, you know, this is the early stages of interactive apps type, you know, interactive type of things like that. But it's just dope to be a part of that. You know, growing up in Houston, I wasn't a part of the the battle rap scene. So it was like, it was something that I was So you think battle raps eventually there's going to be turned, like FaceTime? Like you could be in Seattle. You could be in Seattle. I could be in Texas. And And it's like live streamed at the same time. You know, some of it though is the... Doing it because the in the battle rap, you know, it's a performance. Face to face, yeah, yeah, that face to face disrespect okay. in your face in front of all your people. That's you know, some of that is that because if you if I'm just in my room with all my homies, you know, you holding your nuts a lot. Yeah, I'm really <laughs> holding my nuts, but right. if you face to face, it's like right. eh, you might steal off on me right now. Right. So you know, it might you gotta be ready for all of that. Is people they might you know, you, but that be what that battle rap is all about. But that also is why I never really. Personally, got into that lane because, right. man, if somebody talk about me like that, man, I'm gonna be ready to fight. And it's man. fitting in your face too. Yeah, I can't man, do I, it. Yeah. I can't do it. Shit. I'm, I I'm a it. fan of it, of watching yeah. it. And yeah, shout yeah, out, that's it. Yeah, shout out to my boy, the Jacker. Rest in peace, the Jacker, man. He he really got me on to watching. Hey, hey, you seen this battle? Pulling up battles on YouTube. Hey, you seen this battle? You seen this battle? Oh, he went in. Jacker right. from Oakland. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We we uh that's my that was my boy. We actually yeah, did a uh, we uh man big rest in peace man. We uh we we actually did a uh, we went on tour to to Sweden. We did a festival over there, and it was a a big 
it was a battle rap going on, like a a battle rap concert going on. It was like you, pull, 20, well, you named like fifteen countries here, nigga. You be all over the world. Yeah, I, I got, Mike, a, couple come on, just, I got, I got a couple of states, man. I got me a couple of travel agent. It's I got me a couple of yeah, 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 I got a couple of yeah. man. I got a couple of man. Yeah, but guys, Sweden, you was in Sweden. Yeah, but it, that was my first time being at a, a battle rap live in person and seeing all of it, meeting these artists, seeing how they. You do ain't it see them up. niggas that try to jump ASAP Rocky, did you? I, I don't know, what, man. I, I was, it was no, a few. It, it, it was a few <laughs> years ago when we was there. I thought about that though when I seen it. I'm like, damn, I wonder if it was they there when they. But they looked like a, they was a little younger. So I just they seen them niggas. Yeah, I crazy. seen them niggas yesterday. Them two niggas. Them two niggas. Yeah. Saw them yesterday. I seen them today. I'm back. We was leaving <laughs> um, um, Esteban's kitchen. I said, them two niggas is trying to jump ASAP Rocky. <laughs> I swear to God, in my mind. Yeah, but um, you listen, Paul. Well, we started this to big up our legends and tell people to their face. That you know your grace. So many people in our in, in our culture, they, they, we don't salute our culture, and this is what we want to change. We want to change the narrative of that. So we started Drink Champs in order for us to give people their flowers where they can smell them, their thoughts where they can tell them, their drinks where they can drink them. You know what I'm saying? And they smokes where they can smoke them. Smoke you know what I'm saying? Smoke, and we want to tell like you, man. You know, you've been out here, you know, representing hip hop in the right way, playing the game in the right way. And we want to tell you, we appreciate you. We want to tell you, salute. We want to tell you, man, keep doing your thing. I want to tell you, I'm ordering a new grill. I'm yeah, ordering my, my son a grill. Yes, and, son. and I'm ordering all three of my sons a grill. And, um, but man, we want to tell you, thank you, man. Appreciate you, man. This is Drink Champs. And, man, give you your flowers hey. right now. Much love. Big salute. Big salute. Hey man, anybody anybody call Johnny Man and, and get a grill with a hashtag or whatever. Tell him drink champ, give him that drink champ's discount, man. We we'll give you a ten percent off top, man. Let's do that, goddamn. We'll take a picture and a drop.